What would I say to Joe Rogan? I wouldn't be able to do this if it weren't for him. He's just being himself and he's not putting on a show at all. And everybody likes to put on a show. He created that raw podcast. Yeah. The other part of it is it's all a product of his personality. It's the fact that he's willing to put his open-mindedness and curiosity in the public eye like this because he literally just wants to hear what other people have to say. There needs to be more role models out there like that. Three, two, one. Hello and welcome to episode 70 of Ruse Radio. We are back at it again. Our first ever four-time guest. You're breaking a record, my friend. How does it feel, Rocco Tesla? It feels absolutely amazing, Ruse. I feel invincible, incredible, and unstoppable. I can tell you one thing and two things twice is that I need a nice bitch who can put my on ice. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Understood. And that's how we feeling here for this seventieth episode. I love y'all for for tuning in. You know to to all four. You know if you collect all four, you know you know <laughs> like, a, like a blue eyed white dragon. Oh whatever. yeah, if you can collect all four rules, you know what happened if they can collect all four. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, I don't even want to tell them, but I will tell them that if you do collect. All, I mean, for the fans who know, who, oh, yeah. are, who have been with us for long enough, oh, yeah. they sure know about <laughs> collecting pieces in order to f- form a bigger picture. I think the, your, your second <laughs> the appearance on the picture. show, <laughs> the biggest picture, the biggest. <laughs> and all I'll say, the only hint I will give you guys is only fans. All right. Mm-hmm. I want you to go watch episode two yeah. of the now four episode Rocco uh, series, and then you'll understand what exactly we're getting at here. We got references to previous episodes. You can't get better writing than this. Exactly. <laughs> dude. Like the, the, it's crazy. It's like the Rooseverse is growing, and it's gaining more characters and more storylines now. It's absolutely so, beautiful. Yeah, it is. It's 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 a beautiful thing. It's like it's a microcosm of the universe. If you want to look at it like that, right? I, I can't wait until the no jumper day comes and somebody gets slapped in the roof. <laughs> dude, well, this is the thing. I realized just recently. No Jumper was Roos Radio at one point. Oh, yeah. Like, it started as that, and then Adam22 was able to evolve it into I'm what a, you see as No Jumper today. I'm going to create, I'm going to include the whole culture, he said. And, and honestly, that's what this has become. You know, honestly, it, some might say a micro version, but Flint really ain't all that big to begin with. No, no. And, <laughs> and, and, and the thing is, too, like, it all starts somewhere. So mm-hmm. Adam22 didn't have on these, like, this, this, Everybody, uh, like, like when you look at him now, you think, oh, this guy will bring anybody in. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't like that originally. Originally, it was more of like it was rappers and it was a niche thing. Just like how I t- I've talked to you about how Joe Rogan started out as him just talking with his friends that yeah. were comedians. And then it became bigger than it was. Mm-hmm. And I think that's how a lot of this stuff is. It's just we get so used to seeing the end result that we forget that it wasn't always that. I know that the Burt Kreischer, the Machine movie coming out is like such a full circle moment for them guys over there. Isn't it? For the whole JRE circle, you think? Mm-hmm. Like For the whole little universe of it. Because like, damn, Ari's having his biggest special. Burt has his movie oh, coming out. I didn't out. know Ari was doing a new, like after Jew? No, no. I mean Jew, oh, okay. as in Jew. Shout out Jew. Oh, yeah, shout out, <laughs> <laughs> shout out Jew, man. That, that's just funny for real. I, that's, I mean, I'm not a big Ari fan. Uh, I love Ari, and I like him as a guy. I just, I've never gotten too deep into his comedy, but that one really, yeah, I liked it a lot. Same, same yeah. though, yeah. I like the structure of it, how it was so different than a lot of comedy you see today. And yeah. he talked about that when he appeared on uh, Protect Our Parks protect, the next time after Please that. protect our parks, by the way. I fucking love those episodes. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, it's so funny because the dynamic in the room is everybody's like shitting on Ari while they're telling him that it was good. They're like, yeah, Ari, that's the first good thing you've ever done. Isn't he such a dickhead? Like, <laughs> but no, like, it's great though. I like, no. And Protect Our Parks is great. I, I, uh, another thing, speaking on this thread that we're going on, is I was talking the other day about how I want to bring more people in and kind of have cool, like, combinations of people for yeah. the podcast. And I think that that's exactly what Protect Our Parks is. Yeah. Like, you don't see Shane Gillis and Mark Norman getting together anywhere but, but Protect, Protect Our, Our Parks. And it makes for a great dynamic. It, it is a party in the room every time they're together. Just those two. And then you add in Joe Rogan and Ari Shafir, and you got a whole party. Joe really the anchor of everything. It's like, all right, guys. Because okay. <laughs> well, Joe's the, the professional conversationalist. He knows. Uh-huh. Like, okay, guys, uh, listen. we. Uh, <laughs> I think I'll do the whip it, though. Hand do- me the whip it. Hand me the, <laughs> hand me the whip it. <laughs> he is kind of like the grandfather of that whole... Uh, 
that whole podcast world. Mm-hmm. Like he kind of trained everybody to do it. Uh, like, look, no, you gotta like, you know, do that. Put the headphones on. Act right. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I mean, like, don't do the volcano at the beginning of the episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if you're gonna do a whip it, wait at least forty five minutes. Yeah, look, we give them some content. <laughs> Then look, I read that be willing to listen to us be a little air coherent. <laughs> yeah. I feel like um I feel like one of those it's one of those things where when I watch Joe Rogan now, I'm trying to like consider the fact that he does have all of that experience yeah. leading into every podcast. Because You don't you you typically don't think about it. You think like, oh yeah, this is just like how he's always been, and this is like just an everyday thing for him. But in the beginning, no, nah, it wasn't like that. And he was always a good conversationalist, like but it was, yeah, it was a different thread that yeah. was going. Like, if you watch those earlier episodes, it was not the same show. It wasn't this tight. It no. was, it was it, like he says all the time, it was like just gaps of silence because they were just too fucking fried. <laughs> and and he, when he says that, he's not even talking about the first 50. He's talking about like the first 300. Yeah. <laughs> First 500. Like, I mean, like, they would get super high for a lot of those earlier episodes. And which power to you, but it's like you really need to. I think of podcasting like anything, it's like a muscle and you need to train it. Yeah. Like talking, it's mm-hmm. like a muscle and you train it. And um, comedians, at least, they have the advantage of like that's what they do. They go on stage and they talk. So for them, it's not much different for them to be doing podcasting. But it is a muscle. And it like is. you start to do things intuitively after a while, but you got to imagine for a long time, it's, it's, it's learning. And that's why I'm trying to look at podcasting now like, yeah, I'm on episode 70, but we're yeah. shooting for fucking 7,000. So, yeah, you, you know what I mean? We like, come on, 70. You know, that's how exactly how I pro- uh, approach my music now. It's just like, you know... Uh, I understand. I have to put out this project next, and that that has my that release has my full attention. But I know I'm I'm automatically finna make a hundred more songs like, mm. within the next couple months. Like you know, even there is no there is no stop to to the madness. <laughs> yeah, and I'm you I really wanna... are. Um, let me just say for those that don't know, Rocco has so many unreleased <laughs> songs. It blows my mind. This guy, he'll say, "Hold on, let me show you a song," and he'll pull up a folder with 20 other folders and each one of them is a (laughs) mixtape. And none of them are released and he made all of them in the last three weeks. (laughs) He's snitching on me so hard. (laughs) That is this guy. So when he says that he makes a lot of music, let me be the one to tell you he is not making this up. I appreciate that. Honestly, look, because somebody got to let him know. They ain't going to believe you. I just tell them. Well, I, everybody says that. They're like, oh, man, I'm just going to keep putting in the work and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, yeah. okay, but what? You're what? just not releasing it. We know you're not dropping none. Mm. We know why. <laughs> it, it ain't because you over there working. <laughs> no. Well, I seen you in the club last week. Dude, I'm re- listening to an audio book, and I'm getting real into it. Uh, I think I, I, I'm trying to remember the author's name because... I, I tried to remember it on the last podcast, and it didn't come to me. So I'm going to look it up as I'm talking here. But his oh, whole yeah. thing is like is about if you want to master an art, if you want to get good at a craft, it's The War of Art. It's by Stephen Pressfield. And oh. he had a great appearance on JRE a yeah, long time no, ago. Yeah, no, The War of Art is, is like the uh, the art of war. It's, it's the swap. It's swapped, it's the, yeah. And he talks about the resistance in that book, That's right? That's exactly what I was yeah. about to get at, was the resistance. Because like... You've made all those songs, but what's stopping you is the resistance. Yeah. Because there's nothing that's actually stopping you it's, from putting those songs it's, out. It's nothing tangible. It's nothing real. It's literally just waking up. Whatever whatever steps you have in your release plan, waking up, execute. That's yes. it. There's none, none in between that. Just wake up, execute. That's it. Yes. And, and, and a professional, a true pro, would just do. Do that. They would not question doing. They would just do. Because you got to trust the process. Because you have to trust the process. That is exactly right. A pro would trust the process. For a lot of people, it's difficult to turn pro. That's not an easy thing to do. It's difficult to make a million songs every single day like Rocco Tesla. It's hard to get into that flow state. A lot of people struggle with that. They got a million mental barriers inside of their brain that stops them from doing that. So how do you overcome those mental barriers? Well, there's a million ways that you can do that. But today we're here to tell you one of those ways 
CBD. And that's why Ruse is happy to say that CBD FX is a proud sponsor of Ruse Radio. That's right. We love CBD around here. CBD is great for everything. It's great for making you love everything. It's great for enjoying life. It's great for not being so sore as you move through the modern day world that we are all stuck within. I tell you, I tell you, CBD is the best, especially for people who want to be more productive, which should be all of us, wouldn't you say? So if this sounds interesting to you, how about $20 off your first order of $65 or more? That's right. $20 off your first order of $65 or more. All you got to do is follow the link in our description to get that offer. It's true, folks. CBD's incredible, and Ruse Radio loves it. Enough with all that. Let's get back to business and talk about Rocco's mountain of music. And I think that part of it, too, is like, the fact that you're even making the songs is is a plus. I mean, that's yeah. better than most people. Most people wouldn't, they would stop there at like, oh, I want to make a song today, but I think I'll just make it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So you make all these songs, you just can't, it's like you don't know where the proper place the, to put them is, and then, oh, I made this tape, but this tape's, it's, it's not, I've, I've, I've let it sit for too long, now it's not what I thought it was yeah. anymore, now I'm just gonna make another one. Like, it, if you don't put that work out at the right time, I think that it gets really hard. It piles yeah. up and then yeah. you don't know what is what anymore. No, that's true. And I've, I've dealt with a lot of that, having all of this unreleased music on me uh, for so long. Uh, what I've been doing is just going back, updating the mixes, making it, trying to make it sound more exciting, more modern, you know, just trying to add something that would be new to a listener for the fifth listen to the tenth listen maybe you know adding replay value to the song again something a little closer to Rocco's modern life yeah some you know yeah something a little closer to Rocco's modern life which is a name of one of the projects uh -huh. one of the like 12 <laughs> yes it is one, one of the there's more than 12 no quite literally quite literally I have three trilogies and two mixtapes that three. are unreleased mm -hmm. and wow. finished three mix like three album trilogies like now, full, full, full fledged albums. But like, what is the value of that if it's unreleased? Well, they were they because they're supposed to come out. Like, I wanted to finish them as the trilogy before I uh, put them out. Okay. And and the purpose of them being unreleased is just to make sure I have the proper rollout for everything and have these music videos and stuff. And you know, with life, life, life can't get in the way sometimes. But as a professional, there's a there's a point. Where, you know, your professionalism has to meet, you know, your compromise. Oh, okay. Where, okay, like, you willing to, okay, I'm not going to do this this day. I'm not going to do this this day. But you have, like, you have to do it eventually. Yeah. And I know, I've told myself, no matter what, I'm going to put these 10 projects out by the end of the year. We already have way through the year, and I only got one of them out. Yeah. They still going to get out. They, I mean. I'm still determined on getting all of them What I do, <laughs> what I've been doing. Because with the podcast, I'm ramping up, and I've been talking to you about this. I don't know if I mentioned it on... Yeah, pretty much. Pretty yeah. much. I've mentioned it on here a million times. Y'all know, all right? We're taking the world by storm. They better know. I'm about to have your mom on this podcast. Oh, yeah. So with that being said, I have to scheme this out. There's no way for me to properly get this done unless I have a game plan, like a roadmap. Mm -hmm. And so it's like... And, and I, I'm meticulous with this shit to the point where it's like, okay, so if Gotta I'm be. going to release... Two episodes a week. That means I need to film two episodes a week. That means I need to be rendering on these nights. Mm -hmm. That means I need to be putting X amount of time towards this. That means I'm going to be needing to edit at least two to three clips per podcast, which if I'm releasing more, that means I have to edit more. Yep. And so I'm like, I'll literally get, a, what do you call that? I'll, I'll create like a, I guess just a chart's the word, but it's like a, there's a, a like an Excel spreadsheet. I'll create yeah. a spreadsheet. And I'll have all these times, and then I'll literally oh, yeah. just block it out. And I'll yeah. think, okay, so if an ideal week where I would do two podcasts and do all this, I this, would do this on this day, this on this day, this on this day. This get all the content out that I need to get out. Exactly, at, and, and actually time. have a discipline towards it. Yep. So that way I'm not feeling like I'm not getting it done. I just know that I am. Yeah, yeah it's just before getting done. It was, say again? It, it's just getting done. Exactly, and before the problem always was... I was just, I, I, I wasn't 
properly identifying the fact that I was procrastinating and not like I don't know. I just was thinking of the podcast as this big thing that yeah. was was like way more work than it actually really is. And you really only worked on impulse when it, when you got like a big gust of inspiration or something came to you. Exactly. And so yeah, no, I, I feel the same way about my video content at the moment. I, and I, I'll speak honestly on it, like. I'm not as consistent as I want to be. Like, I want to get to the point where I'm putting out multiple videos. Because I've, I've been telling myself to, from the beginning, you know, to have, like like you said, a roadmap. You know, to, to discuss uh, my personal one with, with my music and everything. I have these three trilogies, like I said, for albums. I want at least, you know... Uh, three singles, waterfall method, uh, water waterfall release plans. That's when you release a single with another song attached to it. Oh, and then you just do it again. Like how? Do, what? How does that work? Well, you release one single, right? And in 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 like the Spotify or uh, Apple Music playlist for it, the the song, like when you click on the song itself and you go into that like that folder, essentially on the website, it have more than one song in it. Even though it's just the one single. Okay. And for people who don't pay for Spotify Premium, it'll play both songs. You know, for people looking for uh, another song, that'll also be in there. Like, a, a artist, to give you an example, you're probably not too familiar with this artist, but No Cap is an artist that do, does this a lot, where he'll drop one song, where he'll literally drop an A-side and a B-side for a single and present them as the same song. He'll it's kind of old-fashioned in that sense. Yeah, honestly. Where... Uh, he will drop a six-minute music video with both songs on it. Oh. But it acts as one single because it's just that one music video. Okay. And when you go when you go to the... Uh, but when you go to the Spotify, it'll say, like, the, the one name of, like, the music video, uh, which would usually be, like, the names of both the songs. And then uh, they have both songs separated, unlike the music video where it just plays both songs back to, uh, you know, front to back. Well, uh, the playlist you can choose it either which song the A side song or the B side song to listen to and add to your playlist when Chance dropped um, cause it, it, it's been split uh, since then but when Chance dropped Acid Rap and there's that I can't remember the name of the song but I've been riding around with my blood on my lip like, I love that fucking song and before it wasn't Acid. it's own song before it was the second half of another song if you remember that Oh, wow. No, I didn't know that. Because I like that song, too. I think it's... Is that Acid Rain? No, no. no. That's not Acid Rain. I can't remember the title at the moment. But... Um, Paranoia. It, Paranoia. Yeah. Yes. And it used to be a B-side of the song that came before it. Like, when it first came out, you would yeah. listen to that whole song, and then Paranoia comes in, like, probably intentionally. Like, Paranoia sets in after the first song. Oh. Yeah. Oh, no. Like, oh, that's hard concept wise. That's chance a genius. Yeah. That boy need to cook up again. I can't wait till the next chance album. I ain't gonna lie to you. I wanna say publicly, uh, I spoke with Jack Man on the podcast not too long ago. And when oh. I spoke with him, he we talked about a, the big day and we talked about Chance's new stuff and just the critical reception of all that. And since then, I have listened to some of Chance's newer songs. I actually I do it. think that it's been a little bit of a return to form. form yeah. yeah. Like, like, uh, what is it? What is it? Eighty uh, ninth. I I forgot what it was. Eighty ninth in Inglewood, maybe. Eighty ninth in Inglewood was a single he dropped. Walla Cam was a single he dropped. Um, the last song, the last single. That was with Joey Badass, right? The last one. No, not that one. But I like that one. Highs and lows. Highs I like that lows. one too. Um, the last single was is yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Oh, I love that song so much. Yeah. I haven't checked it out yet. That one I haven't checked out yet. Uh, uh, man, once this, once we stop the podcast, I'm, we have to listen to that. I fucking love that song. Yeah, yeah. Um, But but uh, another one, his song with, uh, funny enough, uh, Vic Mensa. He has a song with Vic Mensa and Wyclef called Shelter. I think it's a 10 out of 10 song. 10 out of 10? 10. 10, 10 out of 10, I'd even go to say. This is it's some of the most... Big Heart. Day? How, how recent is this? Yeah. Okay. This is supposed Big Day. I think this was last year. All right. 2022, 2021. And now that Chance is on my brain, too, did you see that clip of him on <laughs> T-Pain's podcast? Doing... Oh, no. I thought you was about to bring up him at that festival. <laughs> oh. I know what you're talking about, but I'll, I'll finish mine first, and then okay. I'll let you paint the picture for him. <laughs> uh, well, the one I'm talking about is he was on T-Pain's podcast, and one thing T-Pain will do is he'll say, like, if you could do any song in karaoke and know all the words, what song would it be? And then they'll answer, and then 
T Pain will have them perform the song. <laughs> and uh, some notable examples that come to mind: Tech Nine did Freebird. Holy. Yeah, and uh, can, can you could probably guess what song Chance did? It, it, it's Kanye. Okay. Oh. So he did a Kanye song. Um. Is it from graduation? I think so. I wonder. No, I don't think that's the one. I don't think that's the one. And um, and, and I'm so close. I I I'm I, I'm kind of just asking you so that way you'll say it and I'll look, remember what it was. <laughs> uh, look, cause there's so many absolute slappers on graduation, dog. Oh, um, what else? All falls down. All falls. Oh, okay, okay. Which okay. makes perfect sense when you think, like, you know, that's 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 a banger. It's a banger no matter how you look. When it all falls, falls down. down. You me <laughs> this is what people tune in for. Is. Yeah. <laughs> the rough vocals, bro. They, they, look, this is a musician's podcast. They know what's going on. I think it is. And I, that's going back to what we've been talking about. I think that I want to be the true musician's Joe Rogan, if that makes any sense. Oh, yeah. I don't want to be Adam 22. Oh, yeah. I want to be the guy that properly brings these people in and, like, because I think Adam 22 is an open minded guy, but I don't think he has the philosophical touch that Ruth yeah. has. Yeah. I, I dig deep into these yeah. motherfuckers. I want to know, like, <laughs> I want to know the, the hardcore. Ruth wants to know the hardcore stuff. Ruth wants to know, like, why did you write this song? Like, if Future was in the Ruth too, we asking Future, what you mean by save me? Why you, why you got a whole album called, called Save Me? Yeah. Was that a literal crop of hell future? <laughs> Not only that, but like, yeah, I'll dig in. Like, he'll talk about it, and I want to dig in. Like, I think a lot of people, they, uh, I, I, and I'm not necessarily Adam22, but just interviewers in general, they get, I heard someone say today, the, the, best, the best way you could put it is like, a good interviewer respects the ego, uh, the character yeah. of the person they're inter- interviewing, yeah. but not the... The stature, like the posture of them. Like, I don't give a fuck how popular you are. Perfect example of that is the Kanye and Joe Rogan episode. Yes. Honestly, I think that's a flawless example of what you said. Because he he danced that dance flawlessly. It's mm-hmm. like, I'm going to let Kanye completely be Kanye, but we're going to respect each other on the like a human-to-human level in this conversation. Yeah, and, and, and he's not going to, at the same time, like, I feel like you're the host, so you can't entirely like Kanye railroad you either. Yeah. So you it's it's a tough spot to be in. Yeah. Like like I'm a I'ma wrangle the conversation in when it need to be wrangled in and you gonna respect me when I do that. Cause I'm letting you be Kanye. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. And and it's like that is an art too. That's why it, we're thinking about all the experience Joe has going into that. It's a very interesting watch because it's like we're past the episode a thousand now. You know, like mm-hmm. once you've oh, done that yeah. many fucking interviews or conversations, whatever you want to call them, because podcasts can be interpreted many different ways. But once you sit down in front of Kanye West, you still won't be prepared. Yeah, but oh. he pulled it off. Oh my! I think God. Lex Friedman had a great Kanye interview too. Yes, but I think that Lex fell short. Because it was right. It, it, yeah. He was in a rough. I should be saying yay. He was in a rough predicament. Well, with no, that the interview. problem is though, like Lex, I think Lex felt too personally about the predicament. Well, I think, of course, <laughs> yes, <laughs> as one would. But it's like that's exactly what I'm saying mm-hmm. when I'm saying that, like, I want to be that guy that's yeah. going to bring these people in because I think he failed there. Like, he did a great job, but he also failed because. Yeah. Kanye didn't walk out of that thinking, oh, that was a good interview. Right. Maybe Lex did, but Kanye didn't. Kanye felt like he just got fucking shafted. Little, yeah, a little attacked, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, you might have wanted to show, put some humanity on me and let me speak my truth, but you also are still fucking making me look bad. You're still sitting here in front of me and painting me in a negative light when that's not what my intent is. Like, I'm making these points with love in my heart, and then you are putting your narrative on top of it because you heard that and narrative from someone else. Yeah, not And you're listening. not listening to me. Yeah. And that's what frustrated me so much about that. As you can see it happening, like, Kanye is so out there that he can't even help reaching that far. He's constantly doing it. You wanna- People praise him for it. But then all of a sudden he goes too far, and now it's like, whoa, whoa, you're off the deep end. It's No, that's not how you treat those people, dude. That's not Somebody- how you treat those people. And I want to word this the right way, but somebody like interviewing somebody with the personality type of say like a, a Trump or a, or a Kanye West with such a grand personality and like so much that you know they're paying attention to, 
and so much that's on their mind, you almost have to like handle it like like you know when you deal with somebody with special needs, like say autism or something. You know, you gotta like really pay attention to the minor details, the body language. You know what I mean? Like and really give them their time to express themselves. I think that well, just with those people, I see what you're saying. So and you gotta with, really with listen. that particular group, it you really have to yeah. because it, they're more sensitive to minor. Things that you might do or or even like it's just I think that they're more I think people who are autistic or people who are just have deficiencies at all. They tend to be more emotionally in touch yeah. with their environment. And, yeah. and those people are the ones that are going to respond to whatever energy you're putting out more strongly than someone else. Yeah. And also I think that a lot of artists and creative people and big personalities, they want to express themselves, yeah. but they also want to be challenged to a certain extent. They don't want mm -hmm. to feel like they're being like praised, praised too much. Or, yeah. or, or the opposite. They don't want to feel like it's one or the other. They want to be treated like a person. And so when you have an actual conversation with those people, they respect you for it. They mm -hmm. like that you're talking to them like a person. They like that you're not being all weird because they have some name value. Like, And the other thing is, how are you going to produce something worthy out of that conversation if you don't treat them like a person? Exactly. Like, if, you, if you're if not listening, like, if you're not listening to somebody and you... Like just let shit go in one ear and not the other. Then you really not go like you not gonna get where they coming from. You not gonna understand the the complexities of their conversation, what they trying to explain to you. Yeah, and and the the I think you miss out on the beauty that is the person in front yeah. of you, man. Like everybody's different. Everybody's got mm -hmm. something that leads to them. And I think that it's really interesting that people, you know, we all are different than one another. We all dedicate our lives to whatever our interests things, are yeah. and we dive into those and so we can all share information with one another because we all have our own interests. That's like, yeah, you thing. don't fuck around with music all the time, but I do. That's so one I can thing tell you that, something about it. That interests me with people so much, you know, like like knowing everybody got their own little story and stuff. I feel like, though, people people these days are so, like, jaded and, and scared in life. Be Post-COVID, like, it feels like so many more people are, like, scared to venture out and and really chase after what they really want is like people want more security these days mm -hmm. and and it is it, really it, it hurt me to see because you know like i said how everybody got their own little stories and stuff i feel like we should be out here you know interacting with each other really listening and going experiencing different things that we might not necessarily be interested in ourselves you know like um, in my main friend group, it's only like it's me and and YJM, and we're the only like two musicians, right? So we really only get to talk about music and stuff with each other. Outside of that, you know, we 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 be venturing in the you know our friends groups um, interests, such as you know various different video games and stuff, you know, stuff we wouldn't traditionally play even. And, and you know, that just on an even bigger scale, I feel like, you know, uh, humanity as a whole should get back to, you know, kind of trying new stuff out. Because, you know, shit, I miss seeing, you know, random people in random places, you know. It's, it's nice to see a, a kooky group of motherfuckers at a random place like, the fuck is the Jones brother doing at Coney Island, bro? Wait, what y'all doing down here, bro? Who got y'all down here, bro? I know for a fact Faint Crew be going to Olive Garden. Oh, yeah. Faint Crew do be in the Olive Garden. <laughs> Faint Crew be in the Olive Garden talking about crazy shit. Yup. So y'all are making it happen. <laughs> like, we're already living the dream right there. The straight truth. Ooh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yes, sir. That's another person we'd love to have in the podcast, by the way. I'll take him. Oh, my God. I'll take, I'll take any... Let me just make this public statement, all right? Any uh, Flint rapper that wants to be on this podcast, any of you, please, please. Come on. Come on. If you were wise, you would take me up on that offer. And you want to know why? Because Ruse Radio is on its way up. You would invest now. If you were an early holder in this stock, I would say that that would have a lot of uh, credibility out there in the market, okay? It would definitely up your freaking game. It would up your wallet. It would up your wallet. And you know what? I know a lot of people, they hear all this. They're like, what's all this? What's all these words 
that he's saying, what's all this bob, what's all this gobbledygook? I don't know what he's saying. Well, let me tell you, let me tell you about stocks. Stocks are great because if you invest in stocks, they can change your life. You can invest in a stock when it's $5 and when it's $500. If you invested $10, you just turned your $10 into $1,000. That's right. That's the world of stocks. Now, it seems hard to access. It seems big and scary, but let me tell you, Robinhood's got you handled, folks. Robinhood, a sponsor of today's podcast, is out here making it easy for the everyday man, the common folk, to invest. All you got to do is download the app, get all your stuff on there, put all your info in, and bing, bam, boom, you're ready to go invest in Tesla or whatever the heck you believe in and Boom. Self-driving cars are going to change your life. That's how it happens. Simple as that. Okay? Right now, today, if you scroll down and go to the link in our description, you can get your first free stock on Robinhood for free. That is right. New users of Robinhood are getting a free stock on His House just for being a part of the Coop Troop. My chickens, my roosters, happy to have you. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Robinhood, for supporting the podcast. And thank you you for making it easy to invest in these desocs. We appreciate it. Now let's talk about how we on our way up, fam. And actually that leads me to one of the things I wanted to, I, I made a little list. We actually have topics for this podcast. I, yeah, guys, I know, I, I know I might seem unprepared. I might seem like we're just riffing, but I'm actually a professional, okay? Talk to him. I'm actually a professional. Let him know. It's a list. I have a list on Wrote my phone. It. And yeah, I haven't asked any of the questions yet. And usually I only get to two of them when I have like 10. But I'm a professional and this is not an interview, but it is. All right. With all that being said, <laughs> who are some people that you would like to see on Ruse Radio? Oh, man. Okay. Uh, shoot. Hmm. That's a good, that's a great question, honestly. It's a lot of artists. There's a lot of artists around uh, the city, of course. Uh, I'm going to try to keep it. I'm going to try to keep it at that. Yeah, because I was going to actually ask you two different versions of the question. The first one was that, and the second one is like, okay, if you could have anybody, okay. who would it be? So first one is, yeah, we're keeping it local. We're keeping um, it people who would roll up in here today. Okay. Um, I have a young guy named Cole Hearted. He's, he's very, very dedicated to, like, this music grind and stuff. And, you know, he... Like like myself has the gift of gab, so I think he'll be able to you know tell you a lot, tell you a lot, get a lot of good content, uh, you know, and I think it'd be a good connection to make there. Uh, another guy uh, is another fan crew member, Trey Benz. Uh I think you two uh, have a great interview just to introduce you or you know the audience, because I'm not sure if you had anybody from that side of the Flint music scene yet on, but. I don't think so. I mean, I think the closest I've gotten would probably be Maleo Stone Visuals, Maleo oh, yeah. Stone Visuals, because he does a lot of videos for, for those guys. Though, yeah, for the yeah, yeah, for that community. Yeah, you know, shout out Beecher, by the way. <laughs> yeah, shout I, out Beecher for sure. I'm pretty sure I see him. Like, like I, I'm pretty sure because I always get this because I got him mixed up with Block Logic, and I felt so bad because I I wasn't too familiar with like everybody because. I'll be outside in Beecher, but I don't know a lot of people. A lot of people don't know me. I'll just be playing basketball, right? <laughs> I just be playing basketball. So I'll be out the way for him. But like I walked past him, I was like, no, nah, like, you know, either way, if it's either if it was dude, if it was Maleo Stone or Black Lodge, I was just like, either way, bro, I, I respect the grind like so much. I appreciate what you're doing for the community and shit because, you know, just seeing the young guys rap, you know, that shit, that shit is always nice. Yeah, yeah, and and and, and so Trey Bands, and then yeah. was that the last one you said? Um, yeah, Trey Bands. I think those two, Cole Hart and, and Trey Bands, would be my main picks. Of course, the YJM episode, but long awaited. Yeah, long awaited. That's that right there. <laughs> That's gonna be the one. Um, but for like all time, all time. Uh, <laughs> You're funny, dude. You picked three faint crew members. <laughs> You are on brand. <laughs> look, 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 man. I love the, I love the guys. I love the guys. I love it. I just that was probably the most Rocco answer I could have gotten. <laughs> and then all right, all time. We're talking all timers. So we're on Ruse Radio episode five hundred. Everybody knows who I am. I had Eminem on last week. Who am I having ooh, on this week? Ooh, okay, okay. We need we need 
Uh, we were just talking about this, actually. We definitely need the Rules Clooners episode. I want Clooner. I want Clooner. I messaged him. He said he'll do a virtual interview. Oh, yeah. But I ain't into that. Look, that look. we could do that. We could do that for the beginning. You know, <sighs> maybe if that one hit, we could. I hear you, but it's it's like the problem is I would only do a virtual interview if I absolutely had to. I, like, I think um, Lex Friedman's the same way because I've heard him say on many occasions. Oh, like, fly, oh, fly to Ukraine. Fly. <laughs> yeah, literally. The only person that I've seen him do a virtual interview with is Noam Chomsky. And that's probably because what Noam Chomsky fuck? can't travel and there's just, <laughs> they weren't able to make it happen. But, like, it made sense. Oh, shit. No, that just reminded me. This nigga, this nigga Joe Rogan had Edward Snowden on the podcast. Are you fucking maniac? I would have Edward Snowden on. I would. Oh, my God. No, that's a good combo. I ain't gonna lie. It's this guy uh, called Outlaw Mind on YouTube, who I've been watching a lot recently, just talk about, like, cybersecurity and, and shit like that. What you think of the smart gun? Smart gun. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen that? No. It's a gun that it requires like your fingerprint to no. unlock. No. No. Bad. 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 I robot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so think about it this way: um, the less guardrails that are on something, the better. Like, if, if I'm putting these extra th barriers in between whatever makes this device work, all I'm doing is adding in ways this could fuck up. Yeah. So That's why true. why add in a way it could fuck like, up? Like I like the rail example because if if it's too many rails over there, you might think you can hit that bitch. Yeah. <laughs> if it ain't no rail over there, I bet you ain't jumping off that cliff, motherfucker. Right. <laughs> I bet your dumb ass ain't jumping off that cliff though. <laughs> so I think like I, there's just so much room for failure there. Like what if the what if I'm fucking about to shoot somebody and my fingerprint didn't register the right way and now I can't shoot and now I'm Ooh. dead. Okay, I got another all timer. My bad for cutting you off. Go go ahead. Uh, no. Joe Rogan. Oh yeah. Joe Rogan's on the list. Like, like he yeah, yeah. And uh he, <laughs> he gonna be the one. I mean, if I talk to Joe, I know one thing I'd because I've thought about this, like what would I say to Joe Rogan? Because I've listened to the dude a million times. What would I say right. to him? And I know for one thing, I would want to say to him, like, listen, man. I don't think you understand the impact the impact you have on so many young people's lives. Like I know that you might have some type of grasp on it, but I need you to understand that. Uh, I don't really I pay attention to that kind of stuff. That's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> but like, I want I would want to paint the picture for him a little bit because I don't. I, that's what I'm saying. He ignores it. And the thing is, like, dude, I wouldn't be able to do this if, if it, it weren't for, for him. Yeah. I wouldn't even know that there were people who did that. Like, I wouldn't know, because there's not another podcast that's quite like his. And there's a reason I gravitate towards his, because he's just chatting and just being himself, and he's not putting on a show at all, not even a little bit. And everybody likes to put on a show. Everybody, mm -hmm. Everybody's like, oh, we're doing a podcast, so I better... Like, no, that's not why I fell in love with that. And so... He and he created that. Yeah. He created that particular zone that raw of shit. podcasting, that raw podcasting. Yeah. And, and to me, like, there's nothing that really sits at that same level. And you know, I'm sure that he's aware that he has a cultural impact, but I just think it's so far beyond what is even represented in media because, like, because uh, I know there's kids like, like me. The media don't want to tell you. The media really don't want to tell you how no. big of a grass we got. <laughs> Joe, man, Joe running this mother. Man, yo, Joe. I just think, and, and, and I love, the, the other part of it is, it's all a product of his personality. Mm -hmm. Like, it's the fact that he's willing to put his open-mindedness and his, and his curiosity in the public eye like this that allows for that to even be what it is. So it's just inspirational to me. Like, there needs to yeah. be more role models out there like that that are being open-minded and and just want to hear people out and That's get to the true. bottom of their thoughts. And That's like, true. Yeah, and it's because he cares. It's not because of that he's got this incentive. It's because he literally just wants to hear what other people have to say. And, and I just feel like it, it's such a beautiful thing to see people that do that, and that's why I love the dude so much. So I, was, I would want to... I feel like I said it so well just now, and I will not say it as well that, when I'm in front of him. <laughs> but... <laughs> it's so crazy to me, though, that people lump him in with, like, Tate. And, like, you know, I don't trip on Tate like that. But 
that that's not the same person. No, not you know, even close. Tay is nowhere near as compassionate as Joe is. Even Joe Rogan and Shapiro, like he's had Ben Shapiro on, but they are so far yeah. away from another, one another when it comes to not only what they actually believe, but how they express their beliefs. They're how they so deal with different. people. Yeah. Look at honestly, I, I I strive, I strive to have friendships like that. Me too. Yeah, because you challenge one another. It's like what I was saying about how an artist doesn't want to be treated like they're some type of polarity, like they're one or the other. Like, no, we're all people, and we all can challenge one another, and mm-hmm. and good conversations do challenge you. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, no, definitely. I ain't going to lie. Like, like uh, you know, I hate – damn, I don't want to bring it up because you don't watch basketball like that. No, but go ahead. I mean, it's, I, you can bring – because I'm sure the audience knows what you're talking okay. about. Like – the the Jordan versus LeBron debate is so inflammatory. Yeah. <laughs> like, like no, that is some of the most inflammatory talking basketball. You you could get a barber shop literally up in arms over this one conversation. It's like a Crips versus Bloods type. Situation. Like, hey, bro, it get it get serious. They turn their dogs. Um, me personally, I am on uh, Team LeBron. I think LeBron is the greatest basketball player of all time. He's not my personal favorite, but I like to speak from an objective standpoint when giving my, uh, you know, viewpoint on things. You know, my opinion is reserved for my friends. <laughs> I just feel like people get lost in the idea of comparison. Yeah. This idea of like, oh, well, my thing's better than your thing. Because at the end of the day, you know, they like they did what they did. And you can't take away from what they did. Like, like they did, like, okay, I want to describe it like this. They resumes, you can't change that. No matter what conversation is had, no matter what you say, they got their resumes. And that's what's going to stand the test of time. Not the conversation, not who's winning the conversation right now. Because Jordan wasn't the go always. No. You know what I mean? So, like, nobody's going to hold on to the conversation forever. The only thing that lasts forever is what you put on record for your career. Like, what you actually did for the game. Numbers don't lie. Numbers don't lie. Men lie, women lie, numbers don't. Mm-mm. Numbers don't. That's why I fell in love with the money. <laughs> Dude, I heard, I can't remember who said it, but it was somebody talking, and they were talking about how, like, mathematics is... Like when we talk, when we say words, we're applying thoughts to mathematics, and the thoughts aren't real. They're a fabrication, but the mathematics are real. They're the only finite real thing. Because when you have two, I'm holding up two fingers. I can tell you it's two fingers, but I'm just applying that idea to the fact that I'm already holding up two fingers. Like those, that number doesn't even exist. I made that up. That the symbol itself. Yeah. This could mean anything. Yes. <laughs> yes, the peace sign. Yeah, it could be a peace sign. It could be two. I think in other countries, it's even like, isn't it a rude? Or maybe that's a thumbs up. Yeah, right? that's the... Yeah. But it's like that. Hey, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's very interesting to me, this idea that like, you know, uh, thoughts are simply thoughts. Mm-hmm. And truly what is concrete is what really matters. And so, in, and I think that's, Something we all need to remind ourselves of. Yeah. You know, the further we get sucked into this technological AI uh, age, man. Nothing that's real is everything that matters. In the day's age, bro, nothing that's real is everything that matters. Mm. I thought I was thinking about this last night as I was laying in bed trying to fall asleep. I thought, like, there's no way, there's absolutely no way <laughs> that AI ever be the same thing as a person Mm -hmm. it can't even be artificial life it Mm -hmm. can't be because we can't define life we don't know what life really is so we're pretending like we can but we can't and then the other thing is to have a person you have a million things that lead to this moment right now that makes me me i wouldn't be me if it weren't for what happened five minutes ago he cooking i wouldn't be me if it weren't for what happened two hours ago and so when I hear people saying, like, AI is going to become a person or, like, this whole concept of, of like, it's the same exact thing as the way we form a thought. Like, you're connecting different ideas to form another idea. No, it's different because you are using all of your preconceptions and all of your past experience in order to make sense of that. The robot doesn't have that. It only has the information. Another way you can prove this is look at any AI-generated rap. 
if I didn't have that in those raps on the internet beforehand, mm-hmm. it couldn't produce that rap. I don't need to hear anybody's music in order to make my own song. Right, right. Nobody. You don't have to show me shit. I'll just make it up. Where It's not going to be based on all this shit that you wrote. It's going to be based and on whatever I write. That's why it'll never be able to one-to-one. Like, I could see it becoming like, it could it could be like a shadow of humanity. Like, exactly, a shadow where it's it's a collection of information that is represented. Yeah. Of, yeah. And like... So in that in that case, I think us and the AI eventually come to an understanding. We're back on the AI conversation. I always come back to this, man. <laughs> we were just talking about this off the pod. I okay. can't let go of the AI. Um, it's only gonna get worse, so it, it's probably a good thing for us to talk about, right? Quite literally, like I said, I, my my prediction is it 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 comes to a point where we get in agreement with the AI that okay, what you are is not us, but possibly could be, you know. Knowledge wise, at least, knowledge wise, greater than us. I, mm, yeah, okay. You don't, yeah, you don't want to admit it. You don't, you really don't, because it, it, it'll, it'll never match the spirit. No, of 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 what like the 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 human spirit. It can't replicate that. You you can only get that through the human experience. That's fair. That's fair, and and it's fair to say it would be smarter because obviously it would be. Yeah, it, it arguably it already has is. all of our. Information, it is, you know, a shadow, since it's a collective of the information, it, it can put the information together in ways an individual never could. I think the dangerous thing is when you look at it as its own individual, though. Yeah. And 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 I don't know how deep you are into Lex, but <laughs> Lex is all, I mean, he's he's all about AI, that's his whole profession, and he's a super smart guy, but he's definitely got blinders on when it comes to, like, because you can tell that he's being, he's trying to be thoughtful of this idea that they will have sentience and in the future they will see the content he's producing. So he yeah. doesn't say anything negative <laughs> about AI. Hey, that nigga scared. But it's like, I don't blame him. I don't blame him either. He's the, and he ought to be, he's the one working on it. He, he's going to be the guy that makes it. I mean, you know, the guy that made the nuclear bomb was like, damn, I hope they don't use this one on me. Mm. <laughs> So when it comes to all that, it's like they finna drop a movie on bro. Yeah, that's gonna be crazy. I ain't gonna lie. I am become deaf. <laughs> I am. Oh yeah, Oppenheimer. Yeah. yeah, I'm interested in that man. That is a hey, bro. I I love like the whole Manhattan Manhattan Project like story and shit. Watch the name of mixtape that. Ooh. Well, yeah, it would work I, a lot uh, better if you were from New York. Yeah, yeah, you right. Damn. New York niggas need to get hard again. I think what y'all need to do is make a collab tape from a bunch of rappers from Manhattan. Call mm-hmm. it the Manhattan Project. Oh my God. Bro, put Dr. Manhattan on the cover. Steal my steal that idea. I don't care. That's a great idea. I hope someone takes it. Cook up. <laughs> cook up. Rose is cooking today. I ain't gonna lie. But I mean, like, yeah, man, I just I I, I well with the with the bomb thing. That's a super interesting story. It's it, yeah. it's gonna be interesting to see that as a movie because I remember hearing that as a kid, growing up. The the whole idea that the guy who created the nuclear bomb was so conflicted about it, and, yeah. and I think like wasn't I haven't seen the film or even I, I try to stay away from trailers, but I'm pretty sure how the story goes is like it drove him mad yeah. after he did it. Just the, the the fact that he had done that. He had he had done something so unbelievable. Like he you, he literally did the worst possible thing they, a human could do. He literally did up until that point. Yeah, because I, I feel like that is arguably worse the, than Hitler when it comes to oh, the long term consequences of that. I thought about creation. the dude who created the internet, but that was also Hitler, right? Was it? I think like IBM. I don't know. IBM was not. <laughs> Have you been talking to Kanye? <laughs> No, no, I promise you. I'm reiterating Joe Rogan experience. You might be right. I've just never heard this. Um, <laughs> IBM. I think yeah, like like it's the same thing like with Audi and, and Volkswagen and stuff. You know all those old company that used to be German manufacturers oh. that, that were actually yeah, <laughs> and, and that's why that is why Kanye was saying that stuff about the highways. Now stuff. now look, hold on. <laughs> when, there, there's a point. <laughs> there's a point where the history get a little murky. 
like, yeah, yeah. you can't just go around saying stuff. Well, it's tough because, like, I think the problem is history is written by the victors. Yeah, so that's a big problem. It's a huge oh, problem because we're, we're so acquainted with one another and, like, like the way that we— we look at history as this thing that's, like, written down in stone when truly we see it playing out in front of us. Like, mm-hmm. we could literally see something happen in real life, and then the news would report on it in a different way than what really happened. Mm-hmm. Like, a, 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 a man will give a woman flowers, and he'll be holding a knife because, like, he just bought a knife. And then the news will report on it, like, armed man approaches woman. woman. with flowers trying to trick her. Oh, they're not going mes- to mention the flowers. Oh, They'll yeah. just say he approaches the woman with a knife. Oh, my God. We apprehended the suspect. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, that's how it goes with Crazy. everything. And, and so it really makes you question a lot of history and, like, what sources we can even trust. Like, who—, who you got to imagine, dude, about 50% of history is probably fabricated. Yeah, no, literally, I, I, look, it's a statement— that I, I ain't gonna say it's a statement I live by, but it's a sentence that I have to reiterate pretty often. Bruh, I know, I know, I don't know shit. Yes. But I'd like, like, I'm a smart person, but I know I don't know. <laughs> I think true intelligence is admitting, is admitting your ignorance. Yeah. To be look, truly intelligent is to be comfortable with that ignorance. Because once you know enough about shit, you know, don't nobody know what's going on. Yeah, like the more you know, the more you know you don't know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Like, like, there's this funny boondocks clip. There are known knowns, and there are known unknowns, but there are also unknown unknowns. Things you don't know that you don't know. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. 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 And, and, and that, I think, is illustrated very well by the fact that you woke up this morning. Uh, I don't know how. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened when I closed my eyes. I just... I blinked open. It, it was another day. Yeah. The sun was up. I, I thought of some crazy shit. I don't know if it was real or not. Might have been a dream. I don't know. I heard uh, something. I mean, there's that whole concept of like last Thursdayism where the universe started last Thursday. Holy shit. And if, I mean, you could. <laughs> you just, can't tell somebody like me that. I'll be thinking about that. I'll be thinking about that shit all week. <laughs> Dude, it's a religion. Like, people truly go deep into this because the whole idea is like, I mean, just with the whole example we just said. You woke up today. You don't know how it happened. It could have been all a dream up to when you woke up just today. <laughs> there, there's no proof that any of it was real. I mean, maybe there is, but there's not. And there's no proof that this is real. And so I think that when you think about grand ideas like that, you start to get into this mindset of like, oh, okay, well, if that's our... like. I'm not going to get any bigger of an understanding than this. this yeah. Then we clearly have some bigger questions than like, what we're presenting. And and it shows you how silly our culture is oh, with yeah, the way that we, we care, gravitate around bullshit. We care about absolutely nothing. Yeah. There, there's absolutely nothing going on, and that's everything we give our attention. Like, oh, my God, the Pope had a bellyache today. <laughs> yeah, that's the, breaking news. Breaking news. Yeah. The Pope has a bellyache. He doesn't show up for a fucking event. Like, we, and and I know if I was still working at that McDonald's, I would have been sitting at my lunch watching, like, damn, the Pope about to die. <laughs> they got your ass. They got, they, I'm cooked. I'm fried. Look. And, and I, it's, 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 and jumping out the matrix is such like a crazy concept. Like, like, like jumping out the matrix. Like people, and you know, it's like a, it's a hot, it's a hot term right now with with Tate and everything. But like, literally, because people think hopping out the matrix is oh, you see the world in like these such different lenses than when you did beforehand. And I, I honestly think hopping out the matrix is just being completely honest, like bluntly honest with yourself. Right. I think that's what it truly is. Like being bluntly ra- uh being bluntly honest with yourself about what reality it really is. And like, yo, like, cause it starts with your current situation. Once you get to accept your current situation, then you can accept the rest of the universe. Yeah. And it's like a red pill, blue pill thing in a way yeah. too. Like you take the red pill. Now you start to see the universe for what the, it really is. The curse, uh, the, uh, Iron Man has this thing called the, uh, the, I, I forgot the official name of it, but it's like the curse of knowledge. Where he just knows. He knows. And that's the problem. Is that he knows. Yeah. Because the more you know, you know, the less fun it gets. <laughs> yeah. 
and, and to be someone who's super intelligent would be a nightmare too. Yeah. Like, I mean, I I think that's why Elon Musk is an interesting guy to listen to because he's he is too smart for his own good. And he's just trying to have fun. He's trying really hard. Yeah. He's trying really hard. Yeah. Uh, I mean, man, what do you what do you do though when when culture is gravitating? Because I guess the only thing you can do is be someone like an Elon Musk. Yeah. Be somebody who who in the face of that culture says, listen, like, I want to actually get shit done. Yeah. I see you guys, but I'm not even, like, fuck that noise. Mr. Beast? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Beast. I think that the people brought up the most in this room are probably Mr. Beast, <laughs> Kendrick Lamar, and Joe Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Fire uh, podcast and blunt rotation. If I get all three of them in one room... Bro, I'm breaking. I hey, retire. I've broken the internet twice today. <laughs> if you could get, because Joe Rogan and Elon Musk would be enough. Mm-hmm. But if you could throw another one, like Mr. Beast in there, oh, Trump, you get Trump, Trump in there, oh Trump, Elon God. Musk, and Joe Rogan. Oh my God, no, no, A no. Tate, Tate would be good too. Tate would work in that rotation. <laughs> you gotta get, you gotta get. Look, look, look. As soon as political season roll back around, you yeah. get, you get Trump, Kendrick. That won't work. You don't that won't think work because so? Kendrick ain't about all you that. Don't think, you don't, hey, look, I'm here for the buffooner. No, all right, Kendrick, Joe Rogan, Donald Trump, Joe Budden. I think to Joe get... Joe Budden is your mediator. The only time... <laughs> <laughs> Joe Budden is your mediator. <laughs> Staple gun! <laughs> what I need you to fucking talk about... Because we got to get this fucking done. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Like, listen, stop talking that <laughs> shit, Trump. We're trying to have a fucking conversation. Finish your point, Joe. <laughs> I was just trying to say thank you, Joe. I was just trying to <laughs> get the point across that that Mr. Lamar feels like. <laughs> Mr. Lamar. <laughs> what I was going to say, though, is I feel like I've only seen one extended Kendrick Lamar interview, and it was with Rick Rubin. I was that the one where he was in Africa? No. no. Maybe? It was outside. I think what I'm thinking of is a Zach Lowe one. Is it? But it's Rick Rubin? Wait, was it the Rick, Rick Rubin, Rubin and Kendrick? That, no, I think the Rick Rubin and Kendrick one was like in a field or something. I think they're in like a backyard. They're backyard, chilling yeah. in like a backyard. I think it, it might have been Rick Rubin's backyard. Maybe. Because I know he got like his house is like a fucking sanctuary. Yeah, he's got a <laughs> cool ass house. <laughs> I would love to. Hey, I would love to pull a Mac Miller. Just go to the Rick Rubin retreat. Make music all day? Fuck off, oh, man. I mean, Rick Rubin is a super interesting dude just because he's so he's so open-minded that it's it's kind of similar to the Joe Rogan effect where it's mm-hmm. like you'll see he'll work with all these different people and it's his open-mindedness that contributes to what's created there. Like it's not the fact that he's this expert musician it's the fact that he has such a philosophy Mm -hmm. that it's 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 it touches your spirit and it opens you up like it opens your soul yeah Yeah. and i think that's why i compare him to rogan because i think those conversations you see on rogan those people wouldn't have those by themselves that's rogan's mentality that brings it out that's just so crazy because like he could just bring like tears from people like just by just by sitting there and chilling like yeah yeah, no, I understand. And they just they just keep giving and giving, and he's just like, yeah, no, I understand. Until it gets to the point where it's like, <laughs> and then, what, what's the, because uh, I don't want to mess it up, what's the chef dude name that passed away that they always talk about on drugs? Oh, um, uh, Anthony Bourdain. Yeah, he's like, Anthony Bourdain. And then everybody just get to cry. And it's like, oh my God, they cook it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're cooking. I think like I think one thing is that that makes that happen is that Rogan is really good at letting people express themselves. Simple as that. Like he gives you just enough room and he and he he shows that he cares, he contributes, but he also gives you just enough room to fully express whatever it is the idea is. You know and that's how you can get to those tears. Because I have an you're idea. going all the way. I have an idea to express right now. Okay. Um Fucking bitches be like throwing a hot dog in an empty hallway. Tell me more. These bitches <laughs> be outside rooms. <laughs> these hoes be fucking. <laughs> and these hoes should be allowed to fuck. <laughs> I think so. I think I, I support should. women's rights me too, man. to fuck. <laughs> well, but, but I need you to expand on the hot dog in the hallway. <laughs> 
Man, that wasn't ever, the part I was looking to hear about. <laughs> have you ever tried to like park your car in a parking garage? I have. You don't ever seem to have a problem, do you? No. It just seemed to be like a lot of room sometimes, right? Yeah. It's similar. Oh. <laughs> I see. And some may bring up a lack there of a of, of vehicle size. <laughs> <laughs> to fit in the parking garage, right? Yeah, you don't want to bring your four-wheeler in there. You do. You have to bring the Ford F-150. Yeah. Well, not necessarily. Some girls like a medium-sized car. You know, like a nice, nice little four-door sedan? Or some parking garages, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some parking garages prefer you bring. <laughs> your medium-sized sedan. <laughs> You know, the Impala instead of the uh, family van. Yeah, and some people like black cars more than white cars. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I think that might just be a design issue. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. Is one car faster than the other? Is... I mean, man, I don't. I, hey, I, I will say, though. Okay. Ryan White means you're riding a luxury. I don't know. Mm. Riding the white cars. Now the black cars might be a little faster, but yeah, faster in other places too. That might be a problem. That is true. <laughs> that is true. There's, I, I bet you, there's a lot of fast white cars. Believe me. <laughs> I think it's pretty but, common. Pretty, pretty speed. Hey. Oh man. <laughs> I was just gonna say, what do you think about a yellow car? I mean, yellow there's, car? There's smart cars, right? Now, woo. <laughs> Electric charge. <laughs> This is my tiny be, wheels. This is might be one of the best conversations we've ever had, Rocco. <laughs> this is why oh, I man. identify the conversations, the energy that happens between Rocco and I as Charlie Sheen, Andrew Tate, CeeLo Green. They be energy. saying, they be saying the brown cars got too much fur on them. Really? Yeah, on the seats, too too much fur in the seats. I can understand that. I can understand that. But like, I don't know. Have I mean, ever... who really driving shag these days? I was going to say, have you ever been in, like, a South American vehicle before? Like, have you oh, ever yeah. ridden around in one of those? Oh, yeah. The little, little Brazilian joint. Yeah, like, sure, the fur might be one thing, but, dude, yeah. you're slipping and sliding inside yeah. of that thing. That, that's a fair point. Them things get down. Yeah. Engine be revving. Yes. Kitty purring. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 I mean, man. I mean, man. Oh, my God. Had a South American car that got down like Hellcat, boy, I tell you. Ooh, I like them foreign cars more. Ooh, I you like talking my cars. language, boy. Yeah, Try yeah. Try to give me a Suzuki. <laughs> <laughs> there was, uh, I think, Romanian cars. I didn't used to know this, but I Googled it once. Romanian cars really are special. Ooh. I'll just what? tell you, man, Google. Just give, Google. give it a little Google. I got you. Yeah. I got you. Trust. Them Romanian cars. <laughs> Gotta do my research. Might go to the car show, Nick. <laughs> now, the, 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 and then when it comes to a car, are you more of a front end type of guy or a back, back end type of guy? You know, I really like a good bumper. I love a good bumper. A good bumper. You know what I mean? I, uh, I unhealthily love a good bumper. I, I like. <laughs> I. I could stare at a bump. I don't even give a fuck about the front of the car. Bro, like, 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 bro, totaled in the front. Yeah. Totaled. I ain't even looking. I don't care. But the bumper? Yeah, no pun intended. The license plate? Yeah. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I could, I could definitely throw a bumper sticker on there. Motherfucking, oh, my God. And, and like, it, it's, it's. Bumper so big, it's fucking the trunk up, Nick. This is, this is, we can't talk about this for too long or else I'm going to have to take a break. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. But, segue. Um, vlogs. Vlogs. That's another one of my questions vlogs I got in my, in my interview that's not an interview here. Okay. So, you are doing vlogs, brother. Yeah. Now, we, you, we talked about this last time, but I want to get a little bit more into, like, you've, you've been doing it for a little bit more now. Mm -hmm. You got a little bit more experience under your belt. And uh, I'll tell you, it still ain't shit because vlogs, <laughs> you never, ever figure it out. Oh, yeah. You can do it for years. No, that's true. But what have you learned in the short amount of time that you have been vlogging? Um, Man, a lot, honestly. Honestly. I, I've been making video content for a really long time. Like, I've had a YouTube channel since, I believe, 2009. Or I think my YouTube channel, the one that I have, was started either in 2009 or 2011. 
I was uploading back in 08. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I feel you, man. I know how it is. I was one so, of those kids that was like, I'm going to be viral. Yeah, yeah I'm going to be when vir- fucking PewDiePie. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to be fucking Charlie bit my finger. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Back when that was the most viewed video and it was only like 2 million. <laughs> Like two million people? Yeah. Oh my god! Well, how times have changed. But um, yeah, I used to make content back then to then be in a smash YouTuber and getting my first couple of consistent hundreds of views. You know, making uh fucking moves move set predictions for characters that actually funny enough made it into the game. Really? Oh yeah. And I'm pretty sure I got a couple couple of moves right. Mr. Beast Mr. started as Minecraft YouTuber. <laughs> Did you know? Uh, since we're on the fa- fun fact, Baby Keem, the rapper, was a, also a Minecraft YouTuber. No shit. Uh huh. High Keezy HD. <laughs> I- <laughs> Bro. <laughs> That's great. That's Shout great. Out Baby Keem. <laughs> Shout out Baby Keem. Little creeper in his bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Oh I, I'm God. waiting for the Minecraft track then. Bro, if we can get Kendrick on a Minecraft sample with Keem, I literally die happy. Bro. I literally die happy. <laughs> like rapping over the fucking Minecraft <laughs> intro theme. Do, 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 do. And I'm bidding and bidding and get it, get it. I let these niggas, they say I'm ready. I'm ready again and I'm getting triggered. <laughs> Kendrick with the ad libs. Assemble the village. Assemble the village. <laughs> Baby Keem is your village leader. Baby Keem has the dynamite. <laughs> Baby Keem in your mind, ho. <laughs> Ender Dragon incoming. <laughs> Just random shit. Oh if I hear God. Kendrick Lamar utter the words Ender Dragon, I think and- <laughs> I think it's over for me. <laughs> I might have sinned, bro. <laughs> no, okay. And going from that to, to finally like uh, starting my vlog, uh, I believe this sh- early this year, late last year. Um, it's just been uh, experience learning how to work camera angles, learning skills for directing, learning skills for uh, videotography, cinematography, uh, photography, you know, just learning all of those different skills, learn how to work Photoshop, learn, to learn uh, how to work the, the editing software a little better to, you know, put a full video together. The... Uh, the storyline, the keeping a storyline with these clips and and choosing what to upload and what not to upload and, um, you know, choosing locations and when, you know, because shooting a vlog is like, you you going outside, okay, we, we outside now, what do we do? We have to have something to do. You have to know, you know, which places would make good for the video, blah, 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 you know, and a lot of that stuff is just instinctual. Uh, for me, for somebody who grew up during the content era, I like to say, you know, the internet age, <laughs> Gen Z, <laughs> uh, where you were raised on stuff like YouTube and and Twitch and 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 you know just early internet content of people still figuring it out themselves. Yeah, because you know? the people from back in the day, I mean, you hear it a lot on uh, a lot of comedians saying how like their whole concept of getting big it was so different than it is now because back then it was like. Comedy Central, it's HBO, yeah, it's yeah. it's all of these big uh, uh, prolific names. I know as a brands. musician, we relate to that as musicians to see like how it went from the CD era to the mixtape, like the online that piff mixtape era to the streaming era and, and the and SoundCloud I, era in between. <laughs> I think when we came around, it was actually a little bit before. It was as regular for people to be mixing and mastering and putting the, out all their this own music. Shit. Yeah, Nowadays, 100%. you see it a little more, but like, in like the in like the mid to twenty tens, I don't think that was as much of a thing. Pre band lab, band lab is what really changed the game. I'm not gonna lie. The from, mobile version, yeah, yeah. From what from my understanding, like because like I was there like ground zero for it to see like all of these artists and stuff. Because before that, there was a a, a bit of gatekeeping in hip hop where. <clears throat> You know, at home studios have become affordable, and I knew people who invested in that. But um, as far as like getting some fully produced and and like radio friendly, even some that be able to hit Billboard charts, it it took either time or you had to you know make it past that gate and have a uh, engineer, a studio really like you know latch on to you, you know, or you know you pay that fee too. But. Yeah, <laughs> you pay that fee. <laughs> so back to uh, the vlog stuff. Oh yeah, so uh, back to the 
back to the vlogs. Um, just learning all of that and working the software, everything, it's been a really big experience uh, for me. Uh, just learning how to stay consistent with it and and interact on social media because that's another thing that I have a lot of problems with is like uh, collaboration and <laughs> staying in contact with people. It's just like uh, I'll be in my house making you know, music all day. I think what it is, man, it's like I uh, had crack like on the podcast not too long ago and I think one piece of advice he gave that's really good, uh, and it was I had, the question I had asked was just like, what advice would you give to somebody starting from zero, like nothing? And it's just simply look at yourself as a as a social media presence first, mm. and then whatever you think you are second. Yeah. Because if you're not out there doing that, they don't even know, know who you, you are, are, what you think you are. Yeah, that's so true. That, that, that to me, it's like, <clears throat> and I'm in the same spot where ramping up podcasts, ramping up interviews. When I was first doing interviews, that's what made it work. I reached out to all these people to the point where it gained some buzz and then it started just rolling. And But I had to start that. Yeah. And with the podcasts, I've been going easy where really I should be, be, I should be aggressive. I should be hitting up big names, yeah. tons Look. of people, bringing random ass people in, not being all hesitant like, oh, well, maybe I should just wait till... Oh, cause, like like you, man, I know exactly how it is. I know it's like you can easily squander that opportunity. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's been six months and you still and haven't reached out. Like, wow. And I, this is like the biggest page on Instagram now. And I could have had my post promo. I've uh, rules. I fucking hate myself. Sometimes. I know it. He's uh, speaking. Oh you God. can tell that was personal trauma. <laughs> <laughs> just came out right there. <laughs> like, like, oh, wow, they're managing who now? That's great. Oh, wow. But you can't tell the future. It's like if you sold a stock and then it goes up. Yeah. Like, you, know, you, you didn't know it was going to go up. There was no way for you to know. As long as my name stays in the right conversations, in the right rooms, and in front of the right faces, you know, that's all. You know, them doors, you just got to keep them doors open until, you know, you ready to jump through them. But eventually them bitches going to close. So don't take too long. Yeah, Don't take too long. and that's why you got to stay on the vlogs, man. I mean, if you're yeah. into the vlogs and you really do um, oh, like yeah. the concept of it, you got to stay on top of it. I'm dedicated I was, I, to I, it. I, go ahead. Oh, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm dedicated to it. I did my first three episodes. The next three should be coming very, very soon. As soon as I start working on these next couple music videos, okay. That's pretty much like how I plan out my shoots. Is like the, the, the vlogs are pretty much like promo for the music. It's like I'm gonna give you guys some insight to my life. Like, like it's really, it's, it's more than promo, but that. That's essentially how you know, like, okay, something's coming. He's he's dropping vlogs again. He's dropping content regularly across all his socials. Music has to be coming. I want my fans to be, re like, prepared for that. See, but the thing is, like, I think you should be looking at them as separate yet equal in the sense that, like, yeah. the vlogs incorporate the music, I, but they are also their own standalone thing. I want to give them the same amount of, like, effort and attention and, and care as I would do for a music release as well. Like, you know, even though it is promo for the video, I want it I want that to be just as much as my vision as a, a song or a music video, you know. Like like with uh what we're going to be doing going forward with the skate parts this summer. I'm gonna be pulling out skate parts that I showed you as influence from like Jackass, CKY, you know, old two thousands, like kind of grungy shit. And I feel like that even uh once we start doing that, that'd be more into you know uh Rocco and, and giving it more personality more flavor and, and the care that it really deserves you know me displaying the kind of content that I really think I should be displaying yeah like incorporating the stuff that you fuck with inside of your content yeah. in an organic way yeah exactly it's kind of like one reason I like podcasting too is that I can talk about shit that I fuck with and I don't have to try to incorporate it. It's just like, it's okay. gonna come if you fuck it. with it too, and then you fuck with me, now you might fuck with my music. And that's a fun way for people to get involved. Just like if you have the skateboarding shit. Oh, hey, that skateboarding caught my eye. I like skateboarding. Hey, this song's not that bad. Oh, that's I'm gonna true. check this guy out. Oh, shit, Rocco <laughs> Tesla, okay? But it's like you, I think that you, um, by including your other interests, you can, you. it's like you gain new hooks. Yeah, and honestly, that's what, that's that's more so of it what I've been trying to do is like you know this isn't this isn't an ad because I have videos that are you know are ads specifically to be ran as ads on websites and stuff like little funny shit uh that includes the music like say me and a buddy of mine just like talking about some shit it's like you pop on the screen hi my name's Rocco if you subscribe to my OnlyFans you then can, uh, yeah. <laughs> 
Are you tired of 18-year-olds being the hottest females in your area on Twitter? Well. <laughs> <laughs> have I got the answer well, for you? Have I got the answer for you? Rocco Tesla's new mixtape. Keep them bitches away from you this summer. Wow. And scare the hoes. With this new <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think that one might be taken, man. I think Danny Brown and JPEG Mafia might have beat you. <sighs> Yeah. Shout, shout them out though Shout them out Scared shout the hoes is a god Like day 14 <laughs> That is probably That's legendary Definitely top 10 material Right there When it comes to just titles Oh yeah Great title Oh my god And it is if you, it, It's true to it too If you listen to those songs It does scare the hoes it, Yeah no no, Not a single wet pussy In the <laughs> fucking 10 mile radius Of this song being played <laughs> I, mean, I meet Danny Brown Yo bro That fucking album Scaring the hoes Had my girl's pussy So high <laughs> Not a wet, <laughs> not, not a drop of moisture in the city. Bro, whatever your goal was, you accomplished that shit, bro. Danny Brown, they was playing scaring the hoes in the club, bro. All the bitches went home. They all left. Shit became a gay bar real quick. Said, I stayed for the drinks, twin. I ain't even gonna lie to you. <laughs> right. Oh, my God. So, so yeah, man, I think that it's a, it's a great thing to do that. And I think it's just like, the hard part is figuring out ways to do that in a way that makes sense and doesn't take away from the music, right? Yep. Like, if you wanted to do a music video that was really true to to you, you would want to find a way to make it very true to your aesthetic. Now, luckily, you kind of have an in there. And um, I guess we could... one. I'm going to... Before I head this way, I want to say one thing about the vlogs. because, And then we'll get into that. May I file a complaint? Oh, yeah. I went to your Chicago vlog... Not any footage of you actually in Chicago. It's all in the fucking hotel room. What are you? What were you thinking, man? Ah, uh, no, you're right. You're right. And then the previous episode is me walking to McDonald's. Yeah, oh I mean, God. hey, that's at, at least I wasn't lied to. No. The Chicago one, I was like, all right, let's see where the fuck they went. I didn't see shit. Oh my god. Okay, there was supposed to be footage of us driving through Chicago and me having like little stuff. But, like, I have a lot of, like, little limitations recording off of my jaggedy, wet, raggedy-ass phone. That's actually another one of my questions. I wanted you to explain to the people how, what, what Method. condition your I, phone is in. Hold on. <laughs> they me, don't understand how me. fucking, he gets, he, I have been telling Rocco that he probably is getting, like, radiation poisoning <laughs> by holding that thing no, up to his head. You have no idea. I dropped it the other day. Again, and literally, like, the screen, like, falls out of, like, the whole screen falls out of it. So I have this piece of duct tape now (laughs) (laughs) to to keep the screen attached to the body of the phone. (laughs) Because literally, like, the screen and, like, the touchscreen components in the back of it will fall out of the phone if I hold it like this for too long. Oh, my God. (laughs) Without that piece of tape on it. (laughs) Dude, you can get a shitty, like, camera for probably 20 bucks or something. You could still film. You don't have to use that thing. Oh, my God. Yes. Uh... Yeah, I just... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. Slight unreleased, un- accidental oh, unreleased. Shit. That was that was an exclusive snippet of <laughs> Rocco's latest. That was actually on purpose. Hold on, time. It's funny because that song is hard. I think that song is really hard. Yeah. So if that, like, if that turned out to be, like, the one... <laughs> <laughs> The first time oh, people heard it is right after you were talking about how your phone falls out of itself. Yeah, look, <laughs> like, he was really broke, starving artist. I'm, I'm the real starving artist. <laughs> you can pull up the, pull up episode 70 of Ruse Radio. Ruse I'll show you how broke I was. I was the real starving artist. I'm Joe Biden today. <laughs> Bro, look at my phone. That shit about to fall apart. You niggas, you niggas wasn't in the field with us. I was outside. 2020, hooping. Now just dry. See, the problem with your button impression is that you're still like you're smiling and you're enjoying yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was hooping. I was out there. I was out there. Where yeah, were you? <laughs> you do gotta be mad. <laughs> Where were you at? Well, I didn't see you. I didn't see nobody out there. It was all me. I was hooping hard. I had that phone that barely fucking worked. worked. But I kept going. And you I know went what? to work every day. <laughs> you raggy niggas ain't show up for work. I was at McDonald's. These rappers ain't shit. Thank God we did that sound check earlier. <laughs> I don't think we peaked. I don't think I'm still like yelling like halfway away just to be careful. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm not even going full force. I'm a good oh yeller. God. Oh, dog. I'm, 
Low key, I'm putting a little bass behind it. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I know you You probably can go. It's, oh my it's God. amazing how well I can yell. After I caught COVID, I ain't going to lie. Like, my vocal cords just kind of, they got a little fried. I, they've been recovering ever since. Uh, See, I think one thing that kind of fucked with me is <laughs> I got into these metal and rock covers and shit. Oh, and yeah. you got to be careful with those, man. <laughs> you got to be careful. I and, know uh, the, the screamo shit will fry you know, it's been so long. Because you know I used to do that in my music. It's been so long since I've done that. Oh, my fucking God. Generally, if I do something like that, it's a background layer or yeah. something like yeah. that. Like, I'll have uh, uh, something that goes like, if you love me. Oh, no, no, that's not it. Like, <laughs> you love me. Well, that's. No. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. But that could work. But, like, what I'm saying is, like, I'll have a rap hook where it's like, um, in my dreams, I say, in my dreams, I say, and then I'm in the background going, in my dreams, I say, <laughs> in my dreams, I say, like that. And it's like, I have to really push yeah. that. <laughs> like, the, no, like, like, uh, you know, I do a similar. Well, I, I, I guess I do still do a similar thing. Where not with like the 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 grungy rap, like because that's what I was. That's what I was talking about. But as far as like just high, I like high tune, <laughs> like like high tune vocals, like I would, I do my like like this voice while I'm rapping like this, and it's kind of in a higher tune. Kind of reminds me of Blink-182. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's pretty much it. It's like that. It's definitely like that. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good, man. We got our Tom, is it DeLong? How do you pronounce his last name? Loki, I have no clue. <laughs> me neither. I didn't even know. <laughs> but we got his voice down, like, to a T. Because uh, that's how he sounds. <laughs> <laughs> That, Actually, and, I think that's how he sounds. That, it's more like that. <laughs> Shit, dude, I think I just did Pete Wentz on accident. Yeah, I'm thinking you got me thinking of like like uh, what's the damn? I forgot the name of the of the band. It's some like Pete Wentz's uh, Fallout Boy. Fall Out, Panic oh. Disco is Brendan Yuri. Yeah, Brendan Yuri. I yeah. do I do know him by name. He now nah, he that boy can sing. Huh? I know that boy can sing. I know. <laughs> I've um, tried to like get some of his stuff. To, I just can't. I joined in with the have you people ever heard of? That's closing close. the goddamn door. No, yeah. I can tell Rocco has definitely got that that like uh, mid thousands <laughs> alternative rock. rock. <laughs> it's in him. That's look. That's that's all Lincoln Park. I'm not gonna lie. When I because like the way that I taught myself how to sing was karaoke essentially. Really, just singing over other people's songs and like trying to get it as close as possible. Because my theory was. The more like impressions I can do, the ro- the wider my vocal range will be. That's why I got into the rock and metal stuff. Is I felt like I mean, for one, music is music is music is music. It's music, yeah. But for another thing, it's like all of that is interconnected, and mm-hmm. your voice is an instrument. And mm-hmm. so if I can figure out how to properly sing this song, I'm on your ass next, Post Malone. I ain't gonna lie, that I'm on that country shit. I, hey, I've been working on nothing. But indie folk. <laughs> I've been working on a lot of indie folk. <laughs> indie folk. What the fuck even is indie folk? Like, uh, I've been looking for someone to put up with my bullshit. Ooh. And they not. I thought I was losing. I know what indie folk is. Okay. Yeah, like you know, look, look, look. It's like a country tune. Um, like uh, would Mumford and Sons count? Yeah, yeah, I like think, that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, I like I like it because it's um or you know another good one is uh of of something and men of mice and men is it that their name is I that think the band so. name? yeah they got some great fucking indie folk songs I gotta I gotta tap in I you, th- oh you don't know them like like Lenoki Loki I'm so surprised Post Malone was my introduction into the genre oh and Post Malone's not even really like, it he yeah. just influenced by it but like I'm I'm the type of person once I hear like somebody that's influenced by something I'm gonna go listen to. Eventually, like the fact that you just like put me on that, I'm gonna go listen to that shit. Like, like I, I don't know no of mice and men, but I like modest mouse float on. Mm. <laughs> oh, it's not of mice and men because of mice and men is a metal band, so it's definitely not that. But modest mouse float on is a good. I, th- I think uh, that would count as somewhere in there. Oh, right, already. 
Oh my God! Shout out to uh, Lupe Fiasco for the for the sample easy. Yeah. Oh my God. Shout out Lupe in general. Oh I yeah. think Lupe is one of the realest rappers there has been. Oh yeah. Yeah. He I, he holds it. He he holds the game together a little bit. And, he, I mean, it was interesting hearing Kanye speak or Lupe speak on Kanye. Oh, have he has he recently? It was a very balanced take. Ah, uh, gotta love Lupe, man. So so sad that we never got uh, that group. Of him, Pharrell, and Kanye. Oh, I had no idea that was ever in the works. Child, it's like it's called Child Something Soldier. Okay. Like, like I forgot, I forgot the full name of it, but uh, it was him, Pharrell, it was Kanye, Pharrell, and Lupe, and Supergroup, <laughs> Supergroup. They have one song out officially. Okay. And it but sounds it never, exactly. Never came of it. No, they was they had a whole album in the cut apparently, just never. Came to fruition. I think this was around the time uh, everything that happened prior to 808s and heartbreaks. You know, Kanye losing his mom and uh, the divorce and everything. Well, the call him calling his engagement off mm. around that time, like that 08, 09. Kind Have of, any of these songs leaked? Yeah, uh, I think just maybe another one. Child Rebel Soldier. Okay. Child Rebel Soldier, I believe, is the name of the group. Um, and I think two songs have come out. One officially, one leaked. Okay. Uh, no, nah, but shit would have been shit would have been revolutionary. I ain't gonna lie. I mean, it would be it would have been a whole different. I don't know. It's kind of hard to even imagine that because then you don't get eight oh eights and heartbreak. Right. No, that's true. That's true. And eight oh eights and heartbreak changed the landscape of hip hop when it came out. So I don't know if I would have it any other way. As, as a child, just seeing the heartless video on the TV changed my life. Every time I seen Kanye on the TV, I ain't gonna lie, it changed my fucking life as a kid. Cause I remember, I remember seeing the the I remember seeing that video. I remember uh, seeing the Good Life video. I remember seeing the Put On video. I put on for my city, on on for my city. I uh, I feel like uh, uh, that on me sing. Oh my god, that Kanye wild. Uh, I remember seeing all these videos on TV and just thinking, like, wow, this guy, like, this guy really seems to be, like, the biggest that you could. For me, I don't know, but for me, like, a musician was always, like, the pinnacle of, of what a life could be. <laughs> I tell these stories all the time and just, like, looking back, because I say the same thing about when I seen the Drake over video. Like, you hear that file link coming. <laughs> I know way too many people here right now that I didn't know that. Nigga, when I seen that, I'm like, oh my God, he's him. <laughs> he's him. <laughs> he's him. Him Duncan. Oh my God, him Carmelo Hortons. Him, him Hortons, Carmelo Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Fantano him. in the building. <laughs> Oh my god! I could feel that though, because I mean, I felt the same way. I think I think you know, a lot of people, especially in the Midwest, especially skinny white boys like me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think I, you know where I'm going. I think I do. <laughs> Mr. Slim Shady. Hey, look, not honestly, honestly, him as well. Him, is, but he lived a, a so much more honest version yes. of what it meant to be a rapper. And and that was what attracted me to it. Was I saw like, holy shit! Not only is he being an incredible lyricist. He's saying shit that nobody else is saying, and it's just real shit. Yeah. He's just saying it. It's that, the fact that he's willing to say it that people, that's why they identify with it. Just, that's also what made me a big fan of his. I ain't gonna lie. Like, when I, when I got deeper in the rap, like, when it was more than just, oh, he's flexing the hardest. That, he's flexing. Like, because at first it was like, he flexing hard. That's, that's crazy. I'm trying to get like him. Oh, um, to like actually listening to the music and like, oh, I relate to this. Yeah. <laughs> I relate to this. Yeah. Yeah, and and the other thing is, rap wasn't really like M Eminem was obviously inspired by artists like Nas and a mm -hmm. few others, but or Tupac for sure. Tupac, Nas, Biggie. Rock him. Yeah, Rock him. Yeah. Andre three thousand. Yeah, B three. Oh, I love three stacks. Ooh, I love three stacks so much. The love below. <laughs> <laughs> but when it comes to that, it's like you know, I think he was able to express it in a way that nobody had ever. Expressed it, and and I just remember as a kid seeing that and going like, "Holy shit, that's possible! Oh, yeah. That's what I want to do." Yeah. And I never like, I kind of slowly fell into it, but I really committed around 
an early age, like 12 or 13, I was all in. I'm like, you know what? I'm a musician. I'm a rapper. That's what same. I want to do. I, that, and I've that's not funny turned around too. since. Because like, for me, it was the same age. Like around 12, 13, I was, I was playing basketball and, and rapping. And I was just like, I got to choose one. Like, because I, I knew even at that age, like, you're not going, like, you can't halfway do both of them. Like, yeah. Cause you're not gonna be able. You're not gonna be able to. You're not gonna be able to put in the proper amount of time to get where you need to be. These are two very high skill. Like <laughs> conceptually speaking, though, wouldn't that be kick ass if there was like this dope ass rapper who is also a professional NBA player? We got a. We got a couple. We do. Miles Bridges from Flint. Oh, I didn't know this. Miles Bridges from Flint. Uh, Damian Lillard. He raps. Really good rapper. Um, Master P. Made it to the NBA. <laughs> Percy Miller, Master P. Um, who else? Chris Brown can hoop. Chris Brown can ball his foot. But he's not ass. an NBA player. Yeah. Yeah, that's well, okay, yeah, no, that's true. Sheck West. Sheck West was a D one. Really? Uh yeah, college player. No shit. Mm-hmm. Wow. I got home. Oh. <laughs> That's that's exactly why he made the song because he was friends with Mo Bamba. Oh, he was wow. like he was like he went to school with him. That was his homeboy. Oh. <laughs> okay. Interesting. So no, like you know, rapping basketball, I do got a lot, got a lot of crossover, especially these days. Like Miles Bridges from Flint, you should really look into him if it's possible for you to have him on the podcast. Holy, holy, holy. I, that, I think lie. that that's probably one of the Rocco sound bites. Holy! <laughs> I got that from DJ Academics. Hey, I got boom from you. Boom! I, I <laughs> boom, boom. That's Big Shaq right there. I boom. I say it all the time, like to the point where it's almost a tick. Yeah, no, literally. That that's that's how it is for me now too. I I boom. I, <laughs> yeah. And like people comment on it sometimes, and I'll realize I'm doing it. I'll be like, "Oh yeah, yeah, I got that from my friend Rocco." <laughs> That's literally what I tell him. I'm like, "Yeah, some guys used to say that to me. I just say it all the time now." <laughs> literally, no, literally, because one of my one of my homeboys from work. He said to me all the time, and so that's just how we sign off now. It's just, all right, boom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so convenient. I ain't going to lie. If anything, it's it's punctual. That's why I like it. Like, yeah. Boom. Boom. That's, yeah. Remember that. Boom. That's it. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think that's how you should, Um, when the Rocco podcast finally happens, I think that's how you should close the episodes. All and right. it was a boom. All know? right. Boom. So this has been Rocco, Tesla, blah, blah, blah. Boom. Boom. Cause yeah, it, I like it. Yeah. And the way you say it. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. You got a, you got more of a swag to it tonight. I'm, like- <laughs> <laughs> I'm jealous. Look, hey man, that's hey, that's skater steez. You gotta come hit the you gotta come hit the decks with me, man. That's that skater steez. That's skater steez. I ain't mm-hmm. gonna lie. That yeah, is. I ain't gonna lie. All the all the swag I got, like like you <laughs> This is funny. I'm making a jokey joke right now, but you may think I have black guy swag. <laughs> But I actually have zero black guys. <laughs> Listen, man, you never. When I'm around you, as a black people, I am the most awkward motherfucker in the room. Hey, that's okay. That's oh okay. I might when I rap, I'm black, but when I'm talking, I'm not. Um, <laughs> corporate office rules, except I ain't gonna lie, yeah, because you do be. You know you from Flint when you spit. <laughs> yeah, I, know. <laughs> I know, but if you just had me conversationally, it's not the same. That's, like, that's the difference. The way I, I shape shift. I've been in the studio with like older guys, like like 30, 40 year olds. You know, they listen to like shit like Jeezy, Gucci Man, shit like that. They like put a little sauce on it. That's exactly what they talk about. That like what you do when you rap, that's exactly what they talk about when they say put a little sauce on it. Yeah, because like people go in the studio and they'll be like I'm going to talk my shit. I'm going to do this shit. When it's like, you should be like, I'm going to talk my, my shit. shit. I'm, I'm going to do this shit. Like, I'm going all the way in. I'm not holding back. I'm going all the way. That's what they're trying to tell I'm them. I'm going to talk my shit. I'm going to do my shit. I'm going to ice my wrist. I'm going to lock this bitch. I'm going <laughs> to... Okay, here's a good example. So when I recorded uh, one of my most viral songs, Dag Nabbit, oh, yeah. I throw on the headphones. I'm like, Don't spit that shit to make, make your, your mouth dribble. dribble. Drop that shit to make the no, ground. Wh- That's how I originally rapped it. But then... As I was doing, I was like, wait a minute. Spit that shit to make, make your mouth go. Drop that shit to make the ground go. You I'm know, so sick, uh, I'll make the house wiggle. I'm an 
school. Oh, gee, hear the sound ripple. It's mathematic. Like, I get into that. That, that. that character, that voice you just created. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that is the, uh, that's it. Like, that's the soul in yeah, it. You're it not is. putting the sauce, the soul in it when you're, and, and I, like, I'm describing, sometimes I'll be in the studio with the headphones on. I'll be like, wait a minute. This, this like, is how the soul goes yeah. in there. And it's you know, just an interesting thing how, how you pull that out of you. It's funny. It's, it's funny you bring that up. Uh, the way I think about it is like where it comes from is that that's an amalgamation of our... That is an amalgamation of our influences. Mm. Like, you know, uh, whatever, whatever even possessed you to rap on that beat in the first place is the same thing that's telling you to rap like that. Yeah. Whatever, whatever, like... You heard those sounds together and you liked it and and, and it, it, it pinged in you because you might not be able to know, not like know where you pull it off from. Like, I'll, I'll be on the beat and it'd be like this artist type beat. Yes. But like like the flow that I'm hearing on it is a completely different artist. Well, when I first wrote it, I was thinking this is kind of like an old school Eminem slip, Slim Shady type of rap. But then as I'm rapping it and I wasn't thinking this while I did it, but like. One of the top comments was if Eminem taught Danny Brown how to rap. Right. Uh, you know, I was about because to, it, it's very close to Danny Brown. I don't know if this is it. Yeah, no, you really it is. Um, I don't know if this is even accurate, but I was thinking like Beastie Boys. That too. Yeah. That too. But it's but like you said, it's an amalgamation Mason, of yeah. all those things. One of the comments I've gotten that stuck out to me more than anything, and I, I just I'm gonna carry this with me forever. And it's just a random ass comment. That's why I read comments, man, because <laughs> some of them really do stick out to you. Oh yeah. And the person said, people are going to compare you to a lot of things, but just know that the one thing you are is truly original. And I just, <laughs> wow, that, that was, was such a, a profound way to say that. That's a fucking banger, I ain't going to lie. Because, like, that shows that I am doing what you just described. And it feels so good to hear that. Yeah. Like, I am properly combining those elements to create something unique. And that's that's really all it is, and a lot of people... I feel like a, not a lot of people, but a lot of younger artists confuse doing that with actual imitation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. or the, Yeah, because people see that and they go, oh, this guy's trying to be fucking Danny Brown. That's the first thing they'll think when they see that. Yeah. Oh, he's just... But then if you check out any of my other shit, I'm not like, Oh, that. he doesn't sound like that typically. But it sounds... But this song still sounds like something he'll drop. Like, yeah. it sounds like a him song. But he doesn't use his voice, like, all the time. He's not impersonating somebody. I think people just don't branch out in their art enough. I think they get lost in whatever they think their niche is or mm -hmm. their market is. That's, That's why you can't listen to people who tell you, oh, just do the thing that worked. Rappers like, no, be watching do too many YouTube videos on how to blow up overnight. That's exactly why y'all doing that bullshit. Yeah. Stop, just stop trying to blow up overnight and go put in some motherfucking work. Yeah, because those videos will tell you that same shit. They'll be like, hey, remember that video that got 1,000 views and all your other ones that got 10? Do that video that got 1,000 100 more okay. times. Yeah, look. <laughs> and uh, it might work, but it's not going to work for the reasons you, you thinking it is. And you're not innovating like you were when you made that video the first time. Like, I promise you... It, one, the people gonna get tired of that. If you if you do gain fans, like if you was just that original on that first song, and you get like a big fan base off of it, because some people do do that, it eventually fall off. It will eventually because like, it's a gimmick. Yeah, like you'll have your core fan base to say like like say you get as big as can be. Like like for example, fuck it, I will say a name, the baby. <laughs> oh if, shit! If you if you the baby and you come out with all them songs like uh. Bop and, and all that shit from back in the day, uh, motherfucking Kirk, um, and shit. You make songs like that all the way down the line, bro. Three, four years later, like that's only take three, four years. Three, four years later, cause music going a cycle on about. I like to say three years now. It used to be five. I like to say three now, so it's probably closer to four and a half. <laughs> <laughs> to account for my calculations, maybe not being correct. So. Um, you only got about that that amount of a time frame to even motherfucking like capitalize on it and and keep your relevancy. And during that time, instead of recreating the same songs, you should be like you said, branching out, making new stuff. So when the time come of them getting finally is getting tired of that, you geared up and prepared to go to drop some new shit. Yeah, yeah. When I spoke with Cameron Tyler on the podcast, we had a good conversation about that whole concept of giving the people what they want versus being fully creatively expressive. Mm -hmm. And his whole idea is that, like, if you 
are if you're making music for these people, why would you not want to give them what they want to hear? Like, isn't that's that true. what sales is? Is like you're figuring out what they want and then you're filling in that blank. Mm-hmm. And he also, during that conversation, we got on the whole idea of like, when you blow, it's practically over. It's practically already over. And and you hear that from everybody who does blow. They'll say that it was the years leading up to it that were the most, most. impactful and meaningful. Yeah. And after they blew up, it was just like, oh, oh, okay, that's so that's it. And so when it comes to all that, I just think, and this was my response to him in the conversation, and this is what I'll, I would always say, I want to be the guy that leads by example. Yeah. I'll blow, and then I'll do exactly what you just said. I'll, I'm going to keep cooking yeah. while I blow. Yeah. So you will never even see the next thing coming. Like, and like that, I blew that's again. Why I blew. That's why I blew in the first place. I, and I'm going to blow again. For like, a I'm whole a blow. different reason. Yeah, for a whole different reason. I'm going to blow again. I'm going to hit the the, uh, the culture in so many different places with so many different things, you're going to see me here with these people and here with these people. like. And it speaks to something bigger than you at that point. Yeah. It shows that it's bigger than whatever your concept of your music is. It's bigger than whatever the music is itself. It has you're, to be. You're expanding outwards. Because, yeah. of course, yeah, you you as an artist, you is only probably going to have, like, unless you making, like, deniable, undeniable shit by yourself, you only going to have about one moment. This, this From that point, it, it gets... To cultivating the culture and putting yourself with people that, you know, the people want to see you collaborate with so you can create new moments and stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, changing your sounds up. And that's where the business and the art intersect and you got to you gotta choose the right road. You know what I mean? You feel you feeling that way. I feel like, you know, the supply and demand argument, you focusing too much on the business as the artist. Yeah, there should be somebody else doing that for you. Yeah, like if it, if you if you stressing about it up into that point, then you should have somebody else really focusing on that for you. Because as an artist, you need to focus on art and and you know expanding, creating, and switching up what you're doing to a point. You know yeah. what I mean? Because no artist's art stays the same. Yeah, your it, shit it, gonna grow eventually, and you gotta you gotta like execute on your new ideas because. You might have this one era where you was executing on that shit hard, but the next thing you're going to be doing, you got to make sure you put in the, the right amount of time and the right amount of hours to get that to sound how you want it to sound. Yeah, it's tough. I think there's only a few big artists that really innovate upon themselves oh, yeah. in the public eye, a um, few of which are constantly mentioned on here. And I'll say their names again. Uh, Kendrick, Kanye, uh, Tyler, the creator. Tyler, yeah. And I think... I think those are the three that I can come up with right um, now. It, like rappers who consistently reinvent themselves. Damn. Uh, let's keep. Let's I, keep. Those are really. I think that might be it. Yeah, I think you might. I think you might be right. Just like off the top, in the public eye, at least, like people who are really out there. I think Childish Gambino did something similar, but yeah. he hasn't dropped. I mean, at a, it, once he did that, he's not even rap anymore. Like <laughs> he kind of he just dived right out of the genre into something else. So. I'm trying to think like like well, because I would like to say Playboy Cardi, but I don't think Playboy Cardi has changed like his sound hard enough. Like like, like I'm talking about like Kid Cudi, Kid Cudi's one Kid Cudi is a good yeah. one where he consistently continues to do it. Yeah, like like uh, people don't like it, but I love, I love a speedy bullet. <laughs> Oh, that song, Speed, Speed the, the, Bullet the, to Heaven, the, from Hymphony Fantano, gave it a zero. Oh, no, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Is you talking about the the new snippet he just dropped? Speeding or? Bullet to Heaven was a zero. The, yeah, a zero. okay, yeah, the album. No, yeah, I, yes, Anthony did not like it at all. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the very few zeros that have that's been given out by that man. Look. It it might have been a rough Kurt Cobain impression, but goddamn it, I like it for what it is. <laughs> I just could never even be. I've tried to review music, and um, I could kind of do it, but I think the problem is there's a certain type of person who can review music for a living. Yeah, and I'm just you have to be critical of fucking everything. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I'm just listening, man. Like I just want to hear a good song. I I'm, don't. I'm not listening to it thinking. Oh yeah, well, this could be um uh, yeah, this is all right, but they could have uh as much the, the more... weight a little bit, and it's a little bit muffled on the EQ, and like I don't give mm -hmm, a fuck. Mm -hmm. If I don't like it, I don't like it. <laughs> I'm not gonna fucking sit here and try to tell them how to make their song. Literally, Joe Budden on his podcast. No, they're like as an artist, 
as much as people as much as people would like to say, why is this person talking about music? They don't even make music. Blah blah blah. If they if actual artists was talking about these these, these songs, they wouldn't listen to what we got to say. Because one, we don't agree with y'all. <laughs> we don't agree with the public on most things. <laughs> but two, uh, we don't care about other people's music that much for real. For real. <laughs> And for three, when we do got something critical to say, it ain't going to be like just tearing the motherfucker down. We just like, yeah, uh, I think they, I, at least I would have did this, this, and that. Yeah, like when me and Jack Man brought up the big day, I think we had a really good conversation about it because we didn't, like the typical conversation you see around that album is like, fuck that album. Yeah. Whereas what we're saying is like, it just didn't match with what Chance was putting out up to that point. Mm-hmm. The, like the image. The, the image. image. And, and what, what really made it go wrong was that people just didn't expect that from him. And maybe if it was somebody else, it would have been, been a completely different thing. Like, so fuck, taking man. that perspective is so much more of a respectful way to talk about it, especially publicly, than just going out and shitting on it or mm-hmm. going out and saying, like, all the things that are wrong with it without offering a solution. Mm-hmm. It's like, I, I just think You're that, just criticizing the criticize at that point, and that's hater shit. I think the best criticisms are ones that offer solutions. Yeah. I, I think if you're if you're criticizing something, you should be capable I'm somebody, of telling me how it could be fixed. I don't even want to talk about it unless we're looking for a solution. Like, that goes for most shit with me. Me too. Like, if you, if you come to me, and like, a problem or, like, a complaint or something, how are we going to fix it? Bro, okay, so this might just be a man and woman thing, but I hate when a woman <laughs> tells me a problem. And I will tell her, oh, this is how you solve that problem. And, and she, she gets n- upset because she didn't want to hear yeah, a solution. Yeah, she had no interest in hearing that shit whatsoever. She wanted you to sit there and agree. <laughs> That's it. That's it. If you don't, she wants you to agree with the problem. But it's like, bitch, we ain't getting to the bottom of like, nothing. Yeah, we not think the problem going to stay. You going to stay mad. And that's going to make me mad. Look, you can't. Oh, my God. Yeah, I this can't. This shit drive me nuts, That meant we up a motherfucking wall. <laughs> And I'm sure there's some dudes out there who will be into that drama, but I think that's a little bit of an estrogen situation going on. I'm pretty sure a little too much estrogen in your system, you start you start spouting off on some shit that might I'm not start, matter so much. I'm gonna start telling these bitches mamas they need bills to ass this. I'm gonna start telling I'm gonna start telling these bitches mamas on them. Y'all call her sucking dick. I talk call her sucking dick at the end and out, y'all. <laughs> I, I will supply the belt. I I give you my I got the Gucci on right now. What are you talking about? <laughs> this is actually a fantasy of Rocco's. He likes to see women spanked by their mothers. So don't get it twisted. This is all just his way of getting what he Rose, wants. Why are you telling me like that? I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I just feel like we gotta be honest. I want her and the mama. <laughs> oh, see, I wasn't um, gonna tell him that part. I was gonna leave that out, but all right. <laughs> you gonna go that way? Have I actually ever done that? That is for the audience to find out. Yeah, I've done it six times. Six times? God. Six and a half. Yeah. And whoa! <laughs> <laughs> like like daughter in law, so like what? It's kind of hard to explain. Not sure if I should say it here. <laughs> but it wasn't was, her mom, but it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was her godmama, <laughs> so it was a half. Yeah. Let's just say gray hairs were involved. Whoa! <laughs> Listen, listen. Worst things have been done. You know, this is a comedy podcast. Jesus Christ. That fucking meme with Stephen A. Smith. He just go like, ah. I wonder what made him do that. It's a it's a rehab thing. That was what I thought it was. Like somebody had had said something sad. Like honestly, that meme is kind of sad when you get to the bottom of it because it's very funny to see. But like, dude is legitimately breaking down. Uh, For those that don't know, it's uh, it's um. It's a meme of, like, it'll be, it's on some show, and it's a black gentleman, and he is going, ah! uh, crying. Oh, wait, oh, yeah, okay. Is okay. that what you're referring to? No, okay, I was referring to something else, but we were pretty much talking about the same, like, sound. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah I, I, we did the same I, sound. <laughs> Honestly, I think same was, I think the one, the one I was talking about was a little bit closer. Like, Ooh. I know, I know what you're talking about. Though. That that was the that's the one where the dude was a crackhead and his family had him on yeah. on the on the motherfucking uh, what is that shit called? When you have the the emergency meeting, 
Oh, oh, intervention. Intervention, yeah. Yeah, they were giving him an intervention. They were like, and I, I'm sorry, but I need you. And then the crackhead was like, no. Bro, I'm pretty sure that Zach Galifianakis <laughs> did that on Hangover Part 3. <laughs> I fucking love the hangover. He looked movies. over. At, he looks over at Bradley Cooper and just goes. Ah! <laughs> I will party with those guys. Can, okay, if we're still on podcast guests, imagine oh, yeah. getting the three hangover dudes oh, on no. one pod, bro. How has that finna, not been done yet? Y'all finna recreate protect our party. <laughs> yeah, bro. You could you could literally because you could have the hangover energy. You could have the hangover energy while having the three of them, and you could call it what? the hangover okay. part four. <laughs> the marketing. Ah. Paramount Studios is gonna beat up your ass. Like halfway through the podcast, we're like, wait a minute, where'd Bradley go? <laughs> Somebody get that. Y'all gonna hear knocking on the door. FBI, open up. Ah! <laughs> right. Right. I mean, why? Because we're getting swatted or because uh, we're inside of a movie plot? Uh, it is because both. Oh. You are being swatted due to the fact you're naming this The Hangover 4 and ain't paid a studio no money. Uh-huh. <laughs> Tang comes in. He's a cop now. You. Okay, let me not. <laughs> Don't do accents. That's a bad idea. Don't that- do accents. <laughs> bad idea. Bad news. <laughs> You cannot do accent of Chang, cause Chang do too many things. Chang have too much fun. Chang have too many bitches. Chang have monkey. Chang have monkey. Chang have monkey jerk him off. <laughs> you never had monkey jerk you off. You ain't had no fun. If you have monkey jerk you off, monkey jerk you off all day. All day. Monkey day. don't even get tired. Monkey get high too. Monkey smoke weed. Monkey roll blunt. <laughs> Monkey roll bl- <laughs> monkey roll backward. Monkey roll backward. Let me see if the monkey Pulls <laughs> <laughs> out like Who five roll woods roll by a monkey. <laughs> Who the monkey roll backwards for real? <laughs> you lie like a motherfucker, that monkey don't roll no backwoods. Nah, nah, nah. I believe a monkey could roll a joint. I don't know about a backwood. Oh my for real, I'm not even joking. No, look, monkeys probably have been like smoking cigarettes for long enough where it's like a thing. If you if you hand one like a joint kit and some weed, they'll know what to do with it. <laughs> they know what to do with it. It's in their <laughs> fucking DNA. <laughs> it's like, like they say, monkey. Like when your baby cat's born and it knows how to walk. Like if you had a monkey, fucking joint material. They, they do like monkey. No, it, uh, every time I didn't ever seen a monkey get handed a cigarette in the lighter. It know how to light that motherfucker up. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the wildest take I've ever heard from you. <laughs> I'm sure of it. I'm, I'm, I'm dead serious, man. You hand the monkey, you hand the monkey a motherfucking zigzag paper <laughs> and a little material. If. He'll uh, roll uh, you a fucking. Add that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking shit's rolled perfect. This nigga proud this bitch, man. <laughs> what the fuck? Where you get this monkey? I ain't even, it's not even mine, bro. I found it. Bro, I got this ass from the hood, bro. <laughs> yeah. I found that monkey on Compton. On, on me. Oh, man. Man, that is... I, I, <laughs> I feel like that's got potential there. I ain't gonna lie. We, we got some good clips of this. <laughs> I think what you could do with that is like maybe make a movie called Hood Monkey. And it's like a monkey that's in the hood. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> you see where I'm going? Yes. Yeah. I can see this being a movie already. <laughs> I can I can see myself buying this from the from the DVD man in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> he got hood monkey, bro. He opens what? up his fucking jacket. He's got hood monkey, three copies. What's the name of the What's the name of that of that motherfucking grocery store? You asking me? Yeah. What are you talking about? Damn, I forgot the name of that street, but it's right over there by the old school Bryant. It's oh, right okay. A, you know I that. can't remember the name of the store, no. Why? Is there usually a dude out there selling fucking I think like DVDs? Walmart or something. Yeah. No, did I? Oh. That's what a DVD man is. <laughs> uh, you don't see DVD men no more. It's a no, relic of the past. That's a dead hustle. Yeah, it is a, de- that, that, a that, dead that, hustle. <laughs> yeah. That's a dead hustle right there. Yo. Niggas got Netflix. <laughs> dead Nick- hustle sounds like another hood movie. Uh, yeah, look. Oh, my God. <laughs> Damn you hustle. can make the hood movie about the guy that pushes the yeah, movie. Yeah, no, literally, 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 
Hey, and name it Dead Hustle. Look, bro, all the all the hood movies they on Tubi now. I ain't gonna lie, just go on Tubi. You're so you are- right. <laughs> Tubi is where those get made now. Tubi, Tubi is a new DVD man. Wow. Oh. That is, you're so oh, right though. Shit. Tubi is straight to DVD. Oh my God. Like when you see a movie that's on Tubi, that might as well have been a straight to DVD or a TV movie. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> like when Zac Efron did that Firestarter movie, we should all have been thinking, holy shit, he's taking a step down. Oh my God. Why is he on Tubi? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why is Zac Efron a motherfucking Tubi? Right! <laughs> Bro, you were in a movie with Robert De Niro this, three years this ago. Thing, this thing on the same <laughs> network as Christian Rock, man? What? Yeah, what? <laughs> What's going on here? Thing, who you're on the same, who? You're on the same network as Blueface? <laughs> Tubi really is, like, an interesting thing, though, because, like, it came around not that long ago. It, it is essentially that. It is essentially free hood movies. I can't believe it, 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 it. It's introducing that culture to a whole new audience. Because I didn't see, because I didn't see some crazy shit on Tubi. Every time I see, every time on Facebook I see this Tubi movie, it's some real ghetto shit. Like it's some extremely ghetto shit. hood monkey. <laughs> Hood Monkey. <laughs> Hood Monkey is on Tubi Hood right Monkey now. Hood Monkey sounds like it could be racist, and I think that would draw people to the movie. Also, yeah, no, look, <laughs> have some very inflammatory. Like, you just go all the way with the promotion. Have it mad inflammatory. Like, <laughs> like, 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 it's a, like, it's a silhouette of a monkey in the background and just an all-black cast in the front. Who's the monkey? <laughs> <laughs> they're, holding, like, they're holding watermelons and fried where's, chicken in the background. <laughs> where's the monkey? Man, who made this motherfucker? <laughs> Not only that, dude, you could do it where you do that, but you don't have the people be invisible in the background, only eyes. Oh, and yeah. then the monkey in the front. Oh, my God. Because <laughs> <laughs> that makes it even better. Where's the monkey? Look, literally, it's going to be like an Easter egg in each poster that the monkey is, like, extremely small. Like, you can't see the monkey. You got to actually find the monkey. <laughs> and we like, between all the black people. It's a gotcha. It's a gotcha. We yeah. hey, we watching you on Twitter. We watching this. This is a genius marketing campaign, I must say, because in this day and age, it would actually work better than any other it, point. Yeah, time. no, literally, I hate to, like I hate to say it. Oh, I hate to say it so much, but it's so true. Like, and I say, and I only, I only bring stuff like this up on the podcast in the actual conversation. You know, we no, well, I don't think we we'll ever bring up something like this. But the fact that I'm on the podcast. It got it got to be like, uh, low key. I just lost my train of thought. I tried to bring it home, but I, I don't. I don't. I would have this conversation without a podcast. Yeah, no. 100%. I mean, no. Like, I don't know about you. If man. it came up, if it came up, but like, I had a point behind. I had a point behind saying that, well, but I forgot what it was. I look at it like this. Okay, first of all, comedy, comedy. It's oh a comedy no, comedy podcast. It was marketing. It was the marketing aspect of it. Well, like, yeah. I wouldn't like. From my marketing myself, I know like how valuable inflammatory stuff is. Yeah. But I don't ever like think to actually go do it. Except for this one idea that I have that for I For me it's still a thought might. experiment. Mm. Oh, did you have were you gonna segue somewhere else? I, I I do have one example. Oh, I thought we were going back to that one idea, the hood monkey idea. Oh Okay. <laughs> hood monkey the- coming to a tube near you soon. <laughs> yeah. But I mean like, yeah, it's to me it's just it's about it's it's about the marketing, but it's like it's the marketing. If you're doing that, if you're going for that campaign, is the marketing self aware? Like, does mm. it know that it's being offensive? Is it doing it on purpose? Yeah. Because okay, that's, that's important. Obviously important. Yeah. Yeah. And is it intelligent? Like, is it smart comedy? Because it's very hard to do that yeah. type of comedy without being smart. Yeah. So if you're not being smart, then you're definitely gonna probably fuck up. be offensive. Yeah, you probably being offensive. Probably that's actually true. being racist. Yeah. No. <laughs> Oh my god, no. Oh my god. That that funny that concept is really funny to me. Accidental racism like, oh, oh that's literally Kanye West. Oh my bad, my bad, my bad That's why you gotta rebrand his comedy. That's it. Because once you're comedy, you can you it's, it's comedy now. Yeah. You're allowed to make fun of it. I just look. I'm the joke missed. The joke didn't land. My bad. Exactly. I wasn't I wasn't because no, that it is genuine though. When you when you're doing comedy, I wasn't being me. The joke just didn't land. Yeah, like when I said DEFCON, I, I was just, I was just playing. Uh, <laughs> could, could Kanye have pivoted to, no, I ain't gonna lie, Kanye should have pulled an uh, offset from, from the Migos. Uh, my Twitter got hacked. Uh, <laughs> balls <laughs> in my mouth. Believe that shit. Balls in my mouth. 
You got to you gotta post bars in my mouth like five times after you say Def Con 5. Like, oh, my Twitter was hacked. My bad, y'all. It's the perfect cover, yeah. That is true. That Shit. is true. Offset but, got away with it. Offset did? Yeah, Cardi uh, B still sucking that dick, man. Uh, Cardi B still sucking that meat. I wish I was getting my meat slobbed on by Cardi B. <laughs> Shout out Cardi. We'd love Shout to have you on the Shout out Cardi phone. B. <laughs> but, yeah, man, I just... I. I I don't know. I, I just I think that like comedy is is a very it's a fine line to walk when you're doing offensive comedy. And that's yeah. why I respect comedians like uh somebody like Mark Norman or yeah. Louis C.K. a Ooh, lot. Because both, both of those guys cooking. They're cooking. They'll, they'll they'll go all the way to the edge and then make you laugh at how ridiculous the edge is. Yeah. And and they're very good at that. Yeah. And so That's true. Yeah, that's and, true. and 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 that's why I just like that's why I really do consider getting into comedy, and that's why I like calling this a comedy podcast. Because we are riffing. It yeah. is a bit. And, yeah. and it's based on it's based on ideas that do exist. And like and, and when people the reason people laugh at these ideas is because they're so ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we know it's ridiculous. That's why Hood Monkey is fucking fire. <laughs> that's true. Because how you get to who, like you gotta be riffing. You got you gotta be. You gotta ready. work. You gotta. You gotta work your way up to it, though. If you came up with Hood Monkey in solitude, you're a fucking madman. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what they say? If you put enough monkeys in the writing room, yeah. they'll write the script. Of they'll roll some joints too, bro. <laughs> they'll roll some joints. <laughs> so oh, you had God. another concept you were oh, about to tell me. Oh yeah, uh, the concept of marketing of. Uh, just walking into, not into, okay, that would be big dumb, but walking outside of the police station and just, like, smoking the fattest bag will possible. During a music video or something? Yeah, not even, like, a music video. It's just, like, think of, like, a boot gang video. I'm just literally, like, the whole the whole video is the bullshit. <laughs> like, man, we finna walk up to the, <laughs> we finna walk up to the motherfucking police station and roll this blunt, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a film? Rock oh shit, hold on, rock shit, nigga. Like, what format are we doing this in? Is this a movie or is this? This is this is YouTube. Yeah, this is like this is like a little one minute YouTube video. Like, this is a short. This is YouTube short for. I'm imagining like the Mr. Beast format. You know? Oh yeah. Like it, it just cuts in. We're about to go up to the police station, walk inside, and smoke this fat blunt. <laughs> yeah. What up, officer man? Uh, sir. <laughs> the first shot would probably be someone hitting a blunt right in front of a cop. Yeah, <laughs> that would probably yeah. be the first shot in the well, video. All right, guys. And then, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> cut away. All right, guys. So in this video, yeah. as you can see. Even better, don't cut away. Do the intro in front of the cop. Oh, after my you God. The <laughs> Pass the cop the blunt. Now, now you're really cooking. Nah. Oh, my God. Best part is this video doesn't even have to be real. It could easily yeah. be fake. It could. It yeah. could. Damn. Uh, the real video, he probably gonna smack the blunt out your hand. That's probably even better. Exactly. <laughs> the real one, but the fake one. Dude, people on the internet don't fucking know what they're... They don't know. I'd get arrested for the sake of a video. The second video. Or the real one. I, I'd, get, I'd get arrested for the sake of a video. Oh. Oh. I don't know if I would. It's been like a weekend. It's been like a week in a county. I, get I'm, familiar with the guys. I, yeah. If Ruse went to jail for two days, I might come out a different man. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, Ruse has been institutionalized. Exactly. You need to keep me away from there. Oh, my God. That's why I can't. Yeah. No, look. But look, I respect it. I got, like, yeah, no, look, because for me, I was like, but my dad goes to jail, like, every <laughs> every six months. <laughs> so, it's my like, it's not that bad. <laughs> so, like, basically from where I'm from. <laughs> <laughs> like, but you know, just from example, like that's a real personal example, like a real close personal example I could take from. It's like, okay, he was in there for like a month or so. He didn't seem that bad. Now he a lot bigger than I am, so you know I might have to eat my noodles and, and stay in the gym. But <laughs> <laughs> eat my noodles. You know what I'm saying? Eat my noodles. If, and, if you want to be able to survive in there, yeah. yeah you need enough noodles, enough gym. Noodles and peanut butter, you know, that's what do it for you. That protein and them carbs? Oh, uh, boy. Yeah. <sighs> noodles and peanut butter is crazy. I have heard of this combination. Yeah. You told me about this, I think. I think so. Like, Spaghetti and peanut butter? I've seen no. Okay. 
I don't, hey man, keep that away from me. <laughs> <laughs> um, You've seen people. I've seen people. Uh, I actually, I've seen like a really wild wave on Instagram recently of people putting random items in their blunts. Like I've seen a guy crush up like cinnamon toast crunch and put it in his blunt. Uh, s'mores in his blunt. Pop tarts in his blunt. Alcohol. They dip their blunts in in, in alcohol. Can we just keep it at fucking lavender? Why are we doing all this? What is this? What happened to the mug war, bro? <laughs> what the fuck is this shit? There was this guy on Twitter who would, he would constantly, I think he would like, I'm trying to remember how the, the format of it was, but I believe it was a thread. And he replied to one of Seth Rogen's tweets. And it's about like 60, 70 different videos of him just using different things as bongs. Uh, uh... One of them is like a Nintendo 64. As a bong. As a bong. Yeah. You know, I've seen, I've seen some pretty wild bongs. I've seen, like, a hot dog as a... As a well, I, I, honestly, these days you see more dab rigs than bongs. Weird. Because you can, you can put the little, like, thing in anything. Like, the little... I know what you're talking about. The, yeah. uh, the, 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 it's, it starts with the B, I believe. Funny enough. Funny but it's, it, it's the thing that gets... It's a little hot, glass piece that yeah, gets hot. And you get and, the little thing and you spin it around and yeah, then... Yeah, it's not coming to me right now what the name is. Funny enough, you gave me my first dab. Really? Yeah. Wow. That was my first. That was my first. That, I, I think to this day that was like still my only time ever doing a real dab like that, like that. Because I've done wax after, but it hasn't hit like that. Yeah. I've done it in like ghetto rig pipes where like my homeboy he has this this rig this really ghetto rig where you know from the gas station the little silicone pipes you get. Yeah. Some of them instead of glass like bowls they have metal bowls. Okay. So you can heat up the metal bowl up to the point where you can like drop a dab into it, and like you just use the pipe regularly. Like, do I have my pipe? I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I don't have my pipe with me. But you'd have, <clears throat> excuse me, you'd have to heat that up like very hot. Too hot. By the way, banger. That's what it's called. The banger. Yeah. yeah. But you'd have to heat that up really hot in Too order hot. to make that. Yeah. <laughs> you can't even, and most of the time, a bowl has a choke on it. How the fuck are you gonna choke it now? Probably can't. No. So I wouldn't recommend that. Look, we we literally was like inhaling iron fumes. I'm I'm convinced. <laughs> I'm convinced we were we were inhaling like straight lead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Might as well have been smoking the bowl itself. Like, you quite literally, like the <laughs> materials of the bowl. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Like bowls are not like, like no, and we were like you we were tapping it shatters. It wasn't even <laughs> fucking waxy. We were smoking reclaim. Oh, it was shit. <laughs> yeah, reclaim was the fucking get on dude, dude. Okay, so I have to imagine that the, what was happening here, the reasoning for this, is probably similar to when you see like a fourteen year old smoking out of a fucking water bottle. Can't, Lack no, of I've, resources. I've done that. I've been the guy. Who had to like, all right, bro, we finna poke a hole in this can, go outside to the backyard. <laughs> I would I think it's funny because that was me too when I first started. Never again in my life. Nah. You could never. You could pay there's me. There's no way you, you could get me to hit a fucking aluminum can. You couldn't fucking pay me. <laughs> you couldn't pay me. I, I do the hot, I do the hot knives before I do that. Same. <laughs> hot knives is actually probably pretty relatively safe, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I think so. Like two hot knives, boom! You get you a little like cut off the top of a can. Yeah, get all the smoke in. Yeah, because you're not heating the can. Mm. You're you're just getting the knives hot, and the knives can get hot. The yeah, problem, they're made for that. Yeah, the problem is the fact that you're fucking hitting it through an aluminum, <laughs> bro. I mean, and then it takes me back to all that time I smoked through aluminum foil. No. Oh no! Quite a bit. I didn't. I never. I never did the aluminum for you. Like you made a bowl, just a straight bowl out the aluminum foil. No, that's gangster. <laughs> is it? <laughs> it already is too. Look, typically the stupid shit is what's gangster. Yeah. <laughs> so it is. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I I did. I but the reason was for one, you got to find that perfect balance. You got to find that perfect. How are you gonna make a gravity bong without the proper materials? You, you, so you can make a gravity bong with the right size slider, the right size bowl piece, but not when you're 14. No, you can't buy that shit. Two literally two cutting a two liter up was my first gravity bong. Same. 
That and that was why I needed the aluminum foil. Yeah. Oh. I put it in the top where the like, Oh yeah, you, you do need Oh no, yeah, I use fucking aluminum foil. You're right. There we go. <laughs> yeah, cuz I was about to say, what the fuck? You came up with something better? <laughs> Tell me. You're right about that. But I mean like that was the sacrifice we made, man. That's fucking hilarious though. Why does the gravity bong like why does it <laughs> Why does it interest the young man's mind so much? I would do it today. But every, not with the aluminum foil. Everybody I know, though, like, everybody, I, I know Glebe. Like, do, isn't Glebe's, like, just gravity bongs? Maybe. I've Have never you ever seen those. a Glebe? No. It's, it's like a water bottle. Like, it's like a, like a, what do they call them? Flat, like, not the flask, but hydro flask. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Like, it's like one of those water bottles. And you, you can use it as a gravity bong where, like, the water separates... Well, uh, yeah, I assume you can't use the same water you're drinking, huh? I don't know. I I don't think so. It must not be an actual cup. It must just be a gravity bong <laughs> shaped like a cup because whatever liquid you're putting in there, I hope you're not drinking. <laughs> Steve-O used to, uh, as a party trick, he used to drink bong, bong water. water. <laughs> and it, it was like the dirtier the bong water, the better. <laughs> yeah. He's literally drinking like somebody's cold from six months ago. Mm-hmm. If they didn't clean their bong in six months, holy Dude, shit. Dude, back then people would fucking pour... I bet there's still people out there that do this right now. Pour bleach? A beer inside of a bong, hit it through the beer, and then drink the beer. Oh, God. No, you know what? I can't even I can't even say shit. I've done that, but with Hennessy. That just sounds fucking awful to me. It, it, yeah, no, it burns everywhere. Well, because you're hitting it, and that burns, and then when you drink it, you just fucking ruined your Hennessy. No, oh, my <laughs> so, God. No, like, like they hit though. The, they yeah, hit without why you're hitting something. You're hitting alcohol, guys. Yeah, that can't be good for you, right? Like, have you ever like had rubbing alcohol like a big old cup of it in front of you and then taking a big ass whiff? No, because you never would fucking do that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, <laughs> nigga. You get lightheaded. <laughs> right. There was a guy who did a video where it was getting drunk without drinking. And I want to remember how he did it, but I think he, like, somehow extracted the alcohol into air, into a balloon, and then sucked all of it out of the balloon. He distilled it. Like, he's literally just distilling it. I think so. And and in the video, you could... Holy shit, that's what we're doing. You're distilling the alcohol string to your body. With the bong? Yeah. Oh. Because, well, if you're heating the water up, if you're getting any of the vapor, like the water vapor, or the vapor from the alcohol... Any of that alcohol vapor that's literally just distilling, which I don't know if it actually is doing that, if it's heating up the water enough to vaporize it, but it got to be like some of the alcohol chemicals in the smoke going, just going through it as a medium, right? Yeah. Well, let's pause on Hennessy bong water. I got to pee. Okay. I don't ever see myself like stopping creating content, so like I look forward to the various more podcast we will be doing in the future yeah man and i i i would never one reason i like podcasting is because it's something that i do naturally so it's something that i am am inclined to move towards and to me it's separate the music like i could not drop a song for six months i could keep doing podcasts that's how i feel about my video content as well yeah and and it's a nice it's also nice just to have a separate outlet to not feel like like, if I weren't to make a song for a couple months, I don't feel like I'm stagnant. Because being where we are, like, in music, it could be a lot of pressure sometimes, knowing that people are expecting quality content from you. And knowing that if you're off the radar, then you're gone. Gone, yeah. It, 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 in this day and age, if you're not there for two weeks, you might as well have... Restart. Yeah, like, they don't even know that... They forgot about you. And so it's just constantly being in people's faces. And, like, that can be difficult. Mm-hmm. But if you find different outlets, like a vlog, like a podcast, all of a sudden you start to have fun in different ways even. You start to learn like, oh, right, so I can, I can do this with this format and, and I can't do that with my music. Yeah. So like you learn to experiment in different ways and, and try out new things. I, I, I really think that it, every artist should at least have two different avenues. Yeah, Like 100%. you should have your one lane, but you should also just get something else just to stimulate your mind and see if it's like you don't even have to necessarily commit to it just just give it a chance like if shout out to my artist artists who draw and make music exactly shout out to my artist artists you know what i mean yeah shout out to my author artists you know what i mean 
There is something to me that's just super respectable about people who are willing to make, willing to commit to a trade or a craft. Mm-hmm. Like if you're really willing to dive deep into that and get better at that, and and accept that it's a long term investment and it's I'm not going, gonna like it every day. I'm not gonna be good at it every time I do it, but. You know the the overarching of it, the the trajectory of it. As long as I stay dedicated to it, it's gonna keep going up. And those are the people that inspire me. Like when mm-hmm. I see people 100%. that have dedicated themselves to a craft, like make it, me want to go ten times harder. Exactly. Oh, you doing this every day? Bet, <laughs> bet. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna do it too. <laughs> I'm gonna do it too, but my own way. That look. You you definitely are a big inspiration to me even having that vlog out right now. Thank you, man. The, your, the things you do on, on TikTok is, is nothing short of amazing, putting out four or five videos a day, staying on live, you know what I mean? That's a real hustle right there. That's a grind. That's a y'all y'all are talking about dead hustles. That's a that's a living hustle right there. That's a well breathing, real bread hustle right there. And I'm glad that it has that effect on you, man, because that to me is the ultimate goal. I want to inspire other people to create cool shit. Simple as that. I know how it feels to be inspired. I know what inspires me. And all I can do is continue to go out into this world and just do my best. And um, I heard just earlier today on the, uh, the book I mentioned earlier, Oh yeah, The War of Art. The War of Art. You can't control someone else in the way that they face resistance. Mm. But you can control the way that you face resistance. And when you break that resistance down, when you go the extra mile all the way and continue to create the art, you're providing an example to that other artist. And that's the best thing an yeah. artist could do for other artists. So that if, if I can defeat the resistance, no matter what it is, if I can defeat the resistance, you can too. Exactly. Whatever it is for you. And it's different for everybody, but mm-hmm. we all have that resistance. Mm-hmm. It's always there in millions of different ways. I think that's a perfect place to end off on, honestly. Defeat the resistance. Defeat the resistance. Join, Yeah, defeat the resistance. Join the rebellion. Join the rebellion. Defeat that, the resistance. I like, I like that. that. <laughs> yeah. That's a tagline for real. And with all that being said, thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for being here, Rocco. And Fan crew, man. Fan crew. Fan crew affiliate. That Fan is crew Ruth. affiliate. Number one. That's Fan crew family right there. Fan crew fam. Fan crew family. Fan crew affiliate. I like both those sounds. Oh, yeah. Sounds nice. I'll take it. And you guys are my family as well, all you viewers. We appreciate you. We love, love you. you. We, 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 we are amazed that you stuck around for these two hours. If you manage to do that, please go away and go do something awesome. Go do something creative. Stop listening to us uh, talk so, yeah. and go do something awesome yourself because you deserve it you deserve it and you're capable of it and you got superpowers too yes sir thank you guys thank you guys thank you guys say it a million times because it's always true I'm so appreciative I, 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 I'm full of love I'm full of love <laughs> I'm, full every, of love. <laughs> I'm full of love every time I do one of these things man I just I I really am thankful that I even get the opportunity to that we live in a time where we can just broadcast our thoughts like this. And we live in a time where we can just have a conversation and people can draw from it. I mean, so fortunate. It's, it's, we're so fortunate. And that's a miracle. And I really think that it's a beautiful thing that uh, just a simple conversation like this can inspire people in ways that we would never expect. 100%. And I know I've experienced that myself too. So I hope you guys got something from this today. And if you didn't, ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> oh.